You are now rocking with the hottest boxing podcast in the land. True Media Boxing Radio with your host, Coach Malachi Williams. True, true, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, what's up, what's up, family? This is our boy, Coach Malachi Williams in the building. And we back. Two Media Boston Radio, we are back. We are back, we are back. Two Media Boston Radio, man. We back, man. We we back up in this bitch, man. Uh, bro, I look here, man. It, it, man, it is what it is, man. Um, no, they, they, say that, they say the angel of death has come with a sword, and the sword is dripping with blood. That's what it says, you know what I mean? That's a, that's a, that's a, 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 a metaphor, a metaphor, a parable, so to speak. You get what I'm saying? So... Um, it means that uh, we're not taking no, we we are we mean business today. It means that we need we mean business today, and we ain't taking no shit. You get what I'm saying? Not today, not today. I told you guys yesterday what it was gonna be today. Shout out to um, shout out to Henry Brown. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a bam dub on your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super chat received. Playtime's over, boy. boy. Henry Brown says, if it's true, if this is true. And it is. He say, uh, it reminds me of when Hulk Hogan turned heel, joining the Outsiders going on to become Hollywood Hogan and the NWO. NWO for life. Yeah, I remember that, you know. And, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? They, 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 they say, NWO for life. <laughs> I remember that. They used to kid me with that, man. Big Nas, Big Nas, uh, Razor Ramon. Hey, yo, you get what I'm saying? You, you, know, you feel me? There's a platform stage People pimping, pimping Sharp as razor blades Shout out to Henry Brown Shout out to Henry Brown Hey, okay I'm Dropping that quarter of a dub He said, I see everyone yelling 313 But 213 up in his house He said, hip hop started in the west <laughs> Ice Cube be telling uh, through, through the east uh, Without without the vest Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, I remember Q said that I Remember Q said that um, That was on the west side that was on the West Side Connection album, I think. West Side Connection album. Um, shout out, man. Shout out to the Undisputed Talk, man. The Undisputed Talk, boy. boy it's it's going to be cracking today, boy. It's going to be chunky up in here today. Today is going to be chunky. It's going to be chunky. Chunky. You know what I mean? It's going to be chunky up here today, boy. I can, I can, well, I, I can promise you that. Um, the th listen, the thumbnail and the title. Woo, Lord, but it's going to be hot. Um, shout out to Miss Parker. Salute to Miss Parker. True, true, true. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Uh, let me see who this is. This is somebody new. Uh, see if this is a troll or not. We'll see. We're going to find out. We're going to find out right now. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Anyways, in a way, we're going to let everybody come in a little bit. We're going to get into this show. Shout out to um, Big Stalks. What's going on, fam? Big Stalks. Daniel Agnew is in his B.I. Miss Parker. Green Eyes P. Lisa Bells. What's going on, sis? Uh, shout out to Rod. Shout out to... Uh, salute to Rod. Shout out to uh, Jamie from New York. Lisa, Lisa Bells in his B.I. Salute. Shout out to... Uh, who else we got? Summer in November. What's going on, sis? Shout out to Summer in November. Um, who else we have here, man? Brady 12, the Undisputed Talk is in here. Tila's here as well. Jamie from New York. 
Justino Gonzalez, L is here, L Harvey, Legacy Mindset. Uh, yeah, man, it is what it is. Uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and give everybody a round of applause. <laughs> shout out to the villain. Shout out to the lovely Miss Connie. Uh, it is what it is. Let's get into this show, man. Let's get into the show. I don't burn. I don't burn the couple. He say, damn it, coach. We, and he said, we in here. Yeah, we in here. We in here. We almost at 200. Almost at, uh, well, no, we ain't almost at 200 likes. We got to get the likes up. You get what I'm saying? But it is what it is. Um, if you guys, I might, I might need to sound the alarm today. A lot of you guys are new to the channel. Do I still have the alarm? A lot of you guys are new to the channel. I don't have the alarm anymore. I got to upload the alarm. Yeah, I got to upload the alarm. Yeah, I took the alarm off the soundboard. Why did I do that? I have no idea. Um, yeah, I took the alarm off for some reason. I don't know why. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll get it. We'll get it back right. We'll, we'll get it back right. Because I was, I was going to sound the alarm today. It's going to be one of those days. One of those days. It is what it is. Let's get into the show. Shout out to shout out to Jamario for becoming a member. Salute to you, fam, for 19 months. Being a member for 19 months. Salute to you, fam. Anyway, let's get into the show. Now, did Deontay Wilder betray his fans with the Eddie Hearn deal? And I'm going to tell y'all what I mean by that. If you're new to this channel, let me give you a little backstory. Once upon a time, there was a guy by the name of Deontay Wilder. He was from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And, um, you know, with his limited skills, he got into the sport of boxing to help take care of his sick daughter. Beautiful story. And throughout his boxing career, he had the help of several white people. One, the old white guy who he called his pops. I have the video on that somewhere in my folder. I have the video on that. I saved those receipts. They, they was eating dinner in the restaurant, and he said, this is my pops. This is like my second daddy. I call him Pops. Old white guy, right? Helped him. Um, he went to another white guy, white guy's gym, by the name of J.D.'s. And then uh, once he got with J.D.'s, he eventually took on another white guy by the name of Shelly Finkel. These two white men uh, were uh, very instrumental in the Bronze Bombers boxing career. So, uh, uh, Brown, the Browns Bomber, Bomber used to be over there with Golden Boy. When PBC was formed in 2015, Al Heyman took all of Golden Boy's fighters, and they came over there to PBC. The Browns Bomber was doing good, building his, building his record up, but something happened. The Browns Bomber, uh, something happened definitely around when he fought Tyson Fury in the first fight. A little before that, the Bronze Bomber was building a cult-like following online. There was a group of low IQ niggas who go by the name of the LDBC and their affiliates. And they had members like, uh, uh, you know, the leader, uh, 7 8 Sports TV. They had Black Fight Fan, CC. They're gone. They're doing something else. Um, they had uh, Fred Barbershop Conversation was over there. You know, on BFTB. Uh, you know, they had um, uh, just, 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 just a host of others, right? Then you had Boston Shigo. He was on that bomb squad train. To this day! Um, you had um, Dante's Boxing Nation. I'm giving you guys a backstory. And what happened was these guys that I mentioned online, they begin to create this racial narrative. Racial narrative, Right? And, you know, these guys specialize in, you know, you know, um, the race, you know, the victim Olympics, race card, all that stuff there, right? So as, and they used to promote Wilder a lot on their YouTube channels. So um, this is right before Fanon got kicked out because Fanon used to be a part of the LDBC, but they kicked him out. He got kicked out the LDBC, uh, which really they did him a favor, whether you know it or not. And um, Wilder started acting strange. Like, I guess once he got a hold of these people, he started acting kind of strange. He started becoming their leader, so to speak. Now, Wilder is younger than these guys, but he started to become their leader, so to speak. And they was having 
racial inferiority issues with themselves and they started projecting that onto Wilder. Wilder started becoming the leader, the face, the voice of the Wakanda nigga movement, better known as the Alphabet Boys or the LDBC, right? Because the Wakanda niggas come out of that movement. That was a movement that was going on before, of course, Malachi, before I started my YouTube channel. I didn't know that this was this kind of movement going on. I stepped right into it out of ignorance. No diddy. Then we started hearing, to this day, you know, uh, 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 Wilder and Anthony Joshua negotiations and, you know, and Wilder went to calling, you know, uh, uh, Anthony Joshua and Uncle Tom and all the other YouTube channels, the revolutionary, the Wakanda, the Wakanda nigga YouTube channels, the Shegos, the Fagnons, the Alphabet Boys, Seven Eights, uh, all of them, they, 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 were taking, they were doing the same thing. Elf, Anthony Joshua's Uncle Tom, Deontay Wilder offered him $50 million, he, this old coon ass nigga, and this and that, and yada, 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 yada. Eddie Hearns, this is the stuff that they were saying. Eddie Hearns, they were saying Eddie Hearns is a slave master and all that stuff there, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, okay, where all this is coming from? But, but then, you know, then you have Booger Ray Leonard, he's affiliated with the PBC. So, um, all of these, all, 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 and all of these guys was pro-PBC, pro-Wakanda nigga movement, and this is what was going on. And then um, Booger Ray Leonard had issues with Eddie Hearn. He was in love with him at one point, but then he had issues with him. Then he started talking about he'll slap him in his face and all that stuff that when he see him. So everybody who was down with the PBC, you had to hate Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn was the bad guy, the evil guy, the, the evil white guy, the white devil. This is what they were saying. So that's when the PBC cult formed for the most part, and it became a cult. If you was black and you did not be on cult with their message, then guess what? They will attack you, call you a coon, Uncle Tom, sell out, this and that, try to ostracize you, right? True, true, true. Now I just gave you some backstory. Now, fast forward to 2024. I got videos where, you know, Deontay Wilder was calling, you know, uh, uh, the Alphabet Boys, better known as the LDBC, those guys was dissing, oh man, Eddie Hearn, Slave Master, he this, he that, and you know, the PBC, the place to be, this and that, Buster Rhymes, Young MC, yeah, you know what I mean, and we gotta rob the black man, or this and that, you know, we gonna rob the black man, and one breath, while at the same time, attacking nothing but the black men, Anthony Joshua Black, they attacked them, call him a coon, Uncle Tom, sell out, um, they attacked Dillian White before, they attacked Terrence Crawford, you know, they called Terrence Crawford, top rate, Toby, slave, this and that, yada, 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 black, crispity, 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 black, and all that stuff there, Say all that right bf all of them right you get what i'm saying so pro black but attacking black i got it um so this is what was going on and deontay wilder became a leader of their movement they got behind their king remember they were saying all kind of stuff like young yeah, man you know wilder going wilder going to knock fury out this time the second fight and i thought he was going to knock him out too and then when dog going tyson fury uh buck broke Deontay Wilder in the ring on Black History Month in Las Vegas in front of all of the Wakandas. Then that's when the seams started coming loose in the cloak, right? That's when the seams started coming loose. And then we started hearing all the excuses. Started hearing Glove Gate. Started hearing Baby Mama Gate. Or, 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 or Spike Water Bottle Gate. Crabbing the Bucket Referee Gate. You know, uh, 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 Disloyal Trainer Gate. You know, Juju Gate. Uh, you know, just all of these different gates, right? And they was riding hard, riding on anybody. I know because I was having a digital shootout over here with them. I was, listen, I was having shootouts with Wakandas every time I turned the computer on. True, true, true. Digitally, of course, digitally. Not physically, but digitally, right? And, you know, if you didn't get on with the code and this and that, this and that. So when the white man, Tyson Fury, came over here and beat, uh, took the vibranium from Wakanda, it, 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 they scattered like roaches when the lights came on, right? But then they still had hope. They had hope that it's going to be the third fight. We're going to get it in blood. And we saw what happened. We saw what happened in the third fight. Wilder face planted. Now, this is nothing bad. I'm not dissing Deontay Wilder. I'm showing you guys about the cult that followed him. So the reason why I titled this show, Did Deontay Wilder Betray His Fans with the Eddie Hearn Deal? Because yesterday, we had people like my good brother Melvin Ever Everett and stuff like that. He was saying that when I showed the picture of Wilder shaking hands and hugging Eddie Hearn, he said that, man, this man, this man is a sellout. How do I know? I got the screenshots of the show. He, hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what they said. They said, um, you know, they don't, it ain't nothing like these receipts, but I got these receipts. Let's see. Uh, Green Eyes P said unity. 
Uh, Melvin Everett says sell out. Hayward says um, used car salesman. Wookie Wook said damn turncoat. Sequoia says skinning and grinning. Um, Brady 12 said the brother buy this business. Carlos Resendez say he sold his soul to the devil. You get what I'm saying? So, and uh, Killy Bossy says slave master. So I got some receipts because we're going to go to Twitter and see what they say on Twitter. So, the, and, I, and I know what they say on Twitter because I saw the messages. We're going to go see it. So when I, when, I, when I put this up, I say, damn, I be damned. Then I looked at a video this morning from 7A Sports TV. They was calling, you know, Eddie Hearn the devil. And he's the devil reincarnated and all this stuff there. Slave master. It's funny because now Shaka Zulu. Deontay Wilder is now hugged up, skinning and grinning with the guy who they call the Slave Master. True, true, true. You don't believe me? I had a receipts. In a recent turn of events, news broke that Deontay Wilder signing to Eddie Hearn's matchroom promotions yesterday in the UK. Uh, this caught the boxing world by surprise. Why? Because of the historical bad blood between Deontay Wilder and Eddie Hearn. What do you mean by historical bad blood, coach? I'm going to show you later on when I finish this monologue. I'm talking about the racial overtones, not the undertones, the racial overtones that Deontay Wilder and his online minions were running for years. True, true, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I haven't forgot. I haven't forgot. I'm, I'm listen, I'm not here. I'm not here to bullshit today. Today, I'm taking heads. I'm taking heads today. I'm not bullshitting. If you lucky I don't have my, you, I, you lucky I don't have my alarm. I know I have my alarm. I didn't play it. I don't have my alarm. But you might want to unsubscribe today. If you are a Wakanda nigga or a Shea Butter Laptop Revolutionary, you might want to leave. This, you might not want to watch this show today because we kicking ass today. True, true, true. Back when Wilder and Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua were talking about fighting each other years ago, around two, 2018 and such and such and such, such uh, Wilder called Anthony Joshua an Uncle Tom. He also said that Eddie Hearn was a white man pimping another black man. He was also the poster child in the eyes of the Wakanda niggas from the LDBC for black liberation. True, true, true. Wilder challenged anyone who did not agree with his position. Channels like Boston Shigo, Fagnon, and the entire LDBC uh, went on the attack for their king, Deontay Wilder. To this day. Melvin Everett, as I said before, he said yesterday that he called Deontay Wilder a sellout for signing to Eddie Hearns. Had a receipts, screenshots, right? Especially since all of the years that Jabba the Hutt, better known as 7A Sports TV, calling Eddie Hearn the devil. And he's still calling Eddie Hearn the devil right now to this day. To this day! You get what I'm saying? While at the same time calling Deontay Wilder his king. I am your king. I'm King Julian. King Julian, right? Right. Now he's saying that Deontay Wilder had no choice but to sign to the devil Eddie Hearn. So he was forced to. Forced, okay. This what happens when tribalism doesn't agree with logic. This is what happens when tribalism doesn't agree with the reality of the situation. When you look at things for what it is, when you, no, 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 hold on, let's put it this way. When you look at things for what you want it to be, instead of looking at things for what it is, it allows confirmation bias to seep into your feeble-minded brain. It allows the denial of critical thinking skills to be exercised. True, true, true. At the Eddie Hearns 505 press conference, the king of Wakanda, Deontay Wilder, acknowledged that he's been through a lot since those Tyson Fury ass whoopings. True, true, true. Wilder also said that uh, come the night of the fight, we will see if I still got it. Or not. I had a receipt. I'm going to play it. So it appears that Wilder has been doing some soul searching. Hopefully, the fellow Wakandas 
from the Alphabet Boy community, better known as the LDBC, and, and their affiliates, because you have guys who are not a part of them, but they use their talking points. They are affiliates. They have been Wakandites. Hopefully, the fellow Wakandites from the Bomb Squad Nation will do some soul searching as well. To this day! Why? Because it's obvious that their king no longer wants to lead the revolution anymore. No more um, leading against the big bad white man, the big bad white devil, Eddie Hearn. Malik Scott said in a recent interview, I have that receipt as well. He said in a recent interview that um, Wilder's perspective has changed over the years. That comes with maturity. As you get older, you, you're, you're, the, you, know, you don't view the world at 40 the way you did at 20. As you get older, you mature more, you start to evolve, start to mature, you start to see things differently, right? Once you live life long enough. Malik Scott said that um, he wants Wilder to be, have a violent mindset. I want him to be violent. He's going to fight Big Bang Zang. That's what he said, right? He doesn't want the nice Deontay. Wilder is gun shy. This is me. Wilder is gun shy and he's past his prime. But we'll see how this fight plays out between Wilder and Big Bang Zay. Personally, I got Zay myself. Did you guys feel that Deontay Wilder sold out the revolution for the white devil Eddie Hearns, quote unquote? Do you guys feel that Deontay Wilder betrayed the LDBC and his supporters by signing to the so-called white devil Eddie Hearns match room? Or do you guys feel that Wilder uh, woke the fuck up and he did the right thing? Let's get into the show. Yeah, yeah, we got, we, yeah, we, got, we got some questions today. We got some questions today that need answers. Lucy, there's some explaining to do. Uh, shout out to Jamario. Salute, fam. Shout out to Mr. Gumbo. Hey, okay. For dropping that half for Damn, your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Chat received. Playtime's over, boy. boy. He said, Coach, please turn Riley loose with no plea to fill one, two, three, four, five. Shout out to Henry Brown. Hey, okay. For dropping that quarter of a dub on your boy. He said Wilder can get a lucky punch, but I got Big Bang Zane by TKO. If he, you know, if he stay close and away, away from his power, and then Wakanda Cat, uh, fake hype, give them money and weave. Okay. All right. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People pimping, sharp as razor blades. It's time to come to receipts. So the reason why this is such a big deal for me is because I remember I went through a lot starting this channel. And I remember how when I, when I came up with the Torquenator, I came up with the L Sexuals, I came up with the SLDBC, I came up with uh, you know, the Fagnons, Doodle -doo Browns, you know, uh, the Media Maid. You know, I'm very, very creative. I came up with a whole bunch of names because you know I was, you know, I was I was slaughtering, I was slaughtering these fools, making easy work of this shit. You know what I mean? I was slaughtering these fools, making easy work of them. Right. Um, it amazes me because Eddie Hearns was such an evil guy. So what do I mean by that? I got receipts. Uh, shout out to Drew. Drew sent me this. Drew sent me this receipt early this morning. Shout out to Drew. Shout out to Drew. Uh, let's see. Drew sent me this right here. Which one he sent me? That's Ring IQ. That's something else. That's Ring IQ. That's this guy right here. Let's see what's up. Uh, let's see what's up. So here we go right here. I want you guys to hear this. I'm going to let you guys hear this. Let's go right here. Let me share this right quick. I want you guys to hear this. Because I don't want... Is this it right here? No, that's not it. That's not it. This is it right here. I want you guys to hear this. Listen to this audio. And tell me what do you think. Jerome Boots Ennis has just signed a deal with Eddie Hearn, Matron Boxing. Lord have mercy. If this is true, ladies and gentlemen, this dude, Eddie Hearn, you know I can't stand him. You know I know he is the devil, not a devil, but the devil. But this dude here is, 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 is on some serious, serious uh, takeover business right now. He so, what you just heard, this is a recent 
snippet that someone sent me. Did, did you heard the voice of Butter Biscuits and Crumbs. Butter Biscuits and Crumbs, better known as Jabba the Hutt, better known as 7 8 Sports TV. You just heard the voice of Butter Biscuits and Crumbs. Let me play it again. I don't want nobody thinking I'm making this up. Jerron Boots Ennis has just signed a deal with Eddie Hearn, Matron Boxing. Lord have mercy. If this is true, ladies and gentlemen, this dude, Eddie Hearn, you know I can't stand him. You know I know he is the devil, not a devil, but the devil. But this dude here is, 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 is on some serious, serious uh, takeover business right now. All right, so he says that Eddie Hearn is the devil. So now, why is this important? Their king, Deontay Wilder, the king of Wakanda, just signed with quote unquote the devil according to Jabba the Hutt. Follow me. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go right here, let's go right here, let's go right here. Uh, this is another receipt from Jabba the Hutt. Let's go. Again, I do not own the rights to this material. This is Jabba the Hutt's voice. This is the leader of the Butter Biscuits crew. We're going to call the Alphabet Boys the Butter Biscuits crew. So this is the leader of, of Butter Biscuits. Team Butter Biscuits, this is the leader of them. Hold, you know, give me a side. I just want to throw that out there. This is his voice. Your leader. Your, your, your leader, right? Jabba the Hutt. Jabba! Mm. 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 Now you heard what he said Even though his stomach hurts His stomach might be hurting Because he ate too much Popeye's chicken You know so when you eat too much Popeye's chicken And them butter biscuits with that extra butter on it It'll, it'll hurt your stomach Now Popeye's chicken greasy So he said even though his stomach hurts you know what I mean? He got about three, four stomachs, so I don't know which one. Is it the first stomach or the second stomach? Or was he talking about the third stomach? He got about three, four stomachs. So I don't, you know, I, may, I don't know which stomach he's talking about. But let's see that part one more time. Oh, just say so y'all can't hear Hold on, hold on. My bad. I thought y'all could hear this. Y'all can't hear? All right, y'all can't hear. My bad. Uh, let me let me play it right here. Y'all can't hear it. Okay, cool. Yeah, cause I, I got I gotta let y'all hear this. Y'all can't hear it. All right, cool. No problem. I got you. I got you. Don't worry about. It. I got it right here. I'm gonna play it right here. Where is that? Where is that? Hold on. Where is that? I'll play all this here. I got you. I'm going to play it for you right here. I got it. Y'all can't hear it. Let's go. Y'all can't hear it. Okay, cool. No problem. But Deion, he's going to be there to get hit now. It's um, the one and I'll be back. Wait. Hold on. Let's see what's up. Uh, my stomach hurt. Uh, uh, seeing water up there. Hopefully, um, there's no injuries or nothing, no weirdo stuff going on. And everybody get to go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, come into the ring healthy. And we get to see Deontay Wilder come out on top. That's what I'm backing. That's what I'm riding with. Uh, of course, uh, my stomach hurt uh, uh, seeing water up there with the devil. Not a devil, but the devil. Edward Hearn. But it must be done. Business is business. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. 78 Sports TV, salute to them. Bye. So, 
as you heard him for himself, you know, it, it hurts his stomach. As I said before, the guy got by three, four stomachs. So I don't know which stomach is hurting. Is it the first stomach or the second stomach? Is it the third stomach or the fourth stomach? You know, which stomach is hurting? And I'm pretty sure the reason why that stomach hurting because eating that greasy, that greasy ass Popeye's chicken and them goddamn butter biscuits with jelly on it. True, true, true. Well, that's what he said right there. Eddie Hearn is the devil. So now the king of Wakanda has signed to the devil, Eddie Hearns. Oh, I'm not finished, though. I'm not finished. Hold on. I'm not finished. I remember a time. I remember a time. Do you guys want to hear how Deontay Wilder felt about Eddie Hearn? Let's, hold on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hold on. I got I to gotta play this. What is that? Where, where that? where that video at? Oh, I know where it's at. It's on Twitter. Let me go to Twitter. Let me go to Twitter. Oh, I love me some Twitter, boy. I love me some X. The app X. I love X, boy. A whole lot of whole lot of good stuff on X. Whole lot of good stuff on X, boy. You can believe that there. Where is that? Where X at? Here we go. There was a time where, you know, Deontay Wilder thought Eddie Hearn was the devil. Oh, man, he the devil. He's a colonizer. He's a slave master. Eddie Hearn was a slave master, according to Deontay Wilder. You know what I mean? Because that's his... So, if Eddie Hearn is the slave master, not this is he, this is Alphabet Boys and this is Deontay Wilder's words, then the king of Wakanda had just signed to the slave master willfully. Not gonna let you forget. Let's go. It's crazy. And I just feel sorry for the fighters that's under the stable. You know what I mean? Because that is his true mindset to be a slave master. And like I've, already, I've said it before, that's another thing I've told them during the Joshua uh, the negotiation stuff. I said them slave masters. And you know, and, and I, I guarantee you that family was slave masters at one point in time. I guarantee you it. For him to say that, that is crazy. And I just feel sorry for the fighters that's under their stable, you know what I mean? Because that is his true mindset to be a slave master. And like I've, already, I've said it before, that's another thing I've told them during the Joshua uh, the negotiation stuff that said them slave masters. And you know, and, and I, I guarantee you that family was slave masters at one point in time. I guarantee you it. For him to say that, that is crazy. So, I, this is the question I have. Let's go back to that time. If Deontay, if, if, if Eddie Hearns' family were slave masters because they was white, you don't think that JD's and Shelly Finkel, your two white managers, were family with slave masters as well? Just asking the question. True, true, true. If your thought process at that time were Eddie Hearn is a slave master, and you guarantee his family with slave masters because he's white, um, what about your two white managers, Shelly Finkel and JDs? I'm pretty sure you felt that way about their family. Surely they family had to be slave masters too. Am I correct? To this day. Oh, that different. That different. Oh, oh, that's different. Oh, them the good white folks, huh? Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. So now let's go back to today's time. Let's go back to today's time. Let's go back here. This is Wilder. Hold on. Let's go back to today's time right here. Yeah, yeah, I ain't, I ain't letting these niggas forget. I ain't letting y'all, I ain't letting these what kind of niggas forget a goddamn thing. You what kind of niggas ain't gonna get away from me, no sir. You ain't gonna try to rewrite history on me. I've been through a lot, you understand me? And I've had to regroup, I've had to get myself together. And things just don't change overnight. Things don't change for the next fight or so. You have to keep working. You have to keep pushing. You have to keep working. You have to keep pushing. Keep working. Keep pushing until you get what you want. And I'm at this point in time where I'm narrowing it down. And come come the night of the fight, we'll see if I got it or not. This fight, I'm holding it as my last stand, my last chance. You know, and that's what I'm taking it. Uh, accordingly as you know and i'm just ready to do what i what i what i what i'm known to do mm. you understand to be the wild that i am mm. you know i lost my love and, and the passion for this business i lost my hunger mm. for so many different reasons 
So this is Wilder. This is his speech he gave yesterday at the signing, and the, when they took the mask off, he he, lo he lost his passion, and this fight is going to you know he lost his hunger. This fight is going to tell whether he still got it or not. This is what he said in this here, right? And I'm gonna tell you what lost his hunger for him. It was a a gypsy who I don't like. I don't like Tyson Fury at all. Like you guys know that. I don't hide my displeasure of the guy. Don't like him. But I can't take nothing from him from a boxer. He's a good boxer. Can't take nothing away from him for that, right? His fans is delusional as hell as well. But I digress. What what um, what killed his hunger was Tyson Fury. You know, when I found you, you was like a big house contemplating about killing yourself. So don't you ever forget who brought you back to big time boxing. That guy, when you ran up on him and he put hands and foots off in your ass on Black History Month, Black History Month in Las Vegas, you ain't been the same since. And then when they came back the third fight, he finished you. So that's what knocked the hunger out of you. It was that. But I digress. Let's continue. Um, I've been, those are the words of Deontay the Bronze Bomber. Shout out to, shout out to, uh, uh, Counterpunch Boston. He had recorded it because I couldn't find it. But, um, salute, man. Let's um, give everybody a round of applause. <laughs> so that's why that thumbnail for this show is so important. Because these were the narratives that was being pushed from the Wakanda niggas online. And from the bronze bomber. This is why you, this is, this, see, this, see, this one you got this from. See, this where this came from. They made it something that it was never supposed to be. These niggas that participated in the Victim Olympics, they made it something it was never supposed to be. And Wilder was pandering to these broke niggas online. To these butter biscuits, ass eating ass niggas online, he was pandering to them. The alphabet boys. He was pandering to butter biscuits and crumbs. The butter biscuit and crumb community. He was pandering to them. And he ended up getting his ass whipped. Don't, don't ever forget, when I found you, you, you were strung out on coke. When I found you, you was, you was like a big house contemplating about killing yourself. So don't you ever forget who brought you to big time box. I drug you back. I brought you back. I provided food and put food on your table for your family to eat. And I'm doing it for the second time. So you, don't you ever forget that. Now, goddammit, now, now, what you see? What you see now? You see him cheesing, you see him skinning and gritting. Now, I let you hear, I let you hear where he said that Wilder, where he said that Eddie Hearn was the devil. He's a slave master. So what makes a black man from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, that have two white managers, stands for years be that Eddie Hearn is a slave, a devil, this and that, his people own slaves. And then you willfully go over there and sign with him. Not only did you sign with him, but your white manager, Shelly Finkel, was right there with you. Deontay, you know, you got to forget about that Wakanda shit, Deontay. You know, the gig is up. We're going to have to get the money. This is Shelly Finkel. You know how Shelly Finkel talk. I know I talked you out of taking that $100 million deal, and that was very foolish of me to tell you that, and you were very foolish to listen to me turning down $100 million. But, hey, at least now we get another opportunity to fight on the zone with the Saudis, but this time we're going to sign a one fight deal with the slave master, the colonizer. I mean, sorry about that. I'm um, with Eddie Hearn's matchroom boxing, and he's going to be the one that introduces you, and he's going to make you a captain of his five on five team. True, true, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 no, 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 I'm finna drop these phone lines, man. Uh, shout out to uh, Henry Brown dropping a $2 super chat. He said, we didn't hear Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, yeah, I, I just played, I just played it, fam. Shout out to uh, Jasper. Hey, okay. Dropping that half a dub. He said, Wilder look like he aged overnight. Zane brought blue to KO. Hey, man, it is what it is. Um, shout out to James Bash. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub on your boy. He said, peace, coach. He said, $120 million in slave wages. Yeah, I, hey, I got that video, too, where he said that was slave wages. 
All these broke niggas on YouTube, yeah, nigga, I can't turn that money down. Hundred million dollars, he did right by turning the hundred million dollars down. He listened to some broke niggas on YouTube who got a net worth of two figures. Trying to pander to these low IQ niggas. The Wakanda niggas. Alphabet boys. Pandering to them. With their digital online revolution. Only to end up over there with the colonizer. Oh, man. Uh, he said, peace, $120 million slave wages. He said, damn, can't believe he fumbled the heavy bag. Only to be here with Eddie Hearn. I still, I still got him beating Zang, though. Yeah, yeah, he, now he, don't, he don't stand a slow ball chance of hell of beating Zang, in my opinion. Um, I, I ain't got no faith in Wilder no more, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People not as no boxer. Not after that last shit I saw. The last shit I saw with D. Hammer punch. Hammer punch. Hammer punch. Last shit I saw was that. So that tells me shit. All you gotta do put some. Put all you gotta do is uh, be front foot dominant. Step to him and get him on that back foot, and that's what you are gonna get. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Nah, I ain't man shit. I ain't man. I ain't bad on that dude, man. I ain't bad on motherfucker. That. I'm bad no Zang. I ain't stupid. Anyways, before we get into the show, we gotta say all praises due to the most high, the most exalted, the greatest human being on the planet Earth, Mr. Al Heyman. Well, you know, I guess I gotta be like everybody else and saying Al Heyman. <laughs> I can quit my job now, baby. Six figures, baby. You feel me? I'm out of but, but a name, a name. Do you have a name? Oh, nah, nah. I ain't got no name, you know. Name them names, man. They know who they is. Name them names, please. The names need to be named. They know who they is. The Mexican monster. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I ain't. No, fuck that. I ain't shit. I ain't. Fuck, nigga, 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 I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I, nigga, I'm, I am done. I get what I'm saying? Like, listen, Wakanda is dead. That shit over with, bro. That, that shit is over with. The vibranium gone. Black Panther gone. Nigga, it's over. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, they gone. I think they passed away too. Nigga, that shit, that shit is over with, boy. It's over. Right? Listen, it's, oh, it's over. You can keep hope, listen, you keep hope alive all you want now. To this day. That's all. You can keep listening. You can keep hope alive if you want. But I don't see it, but I needed to see, boy. It's over. Don't everybody believe in Google? Go Google that shit. Yes, sir. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all all know what I'm talking about, man. I did, I did call it the way I see it, dog. I say what I say, and I deliver it. Yes, sir. Ran off on the floor twice. You know what it is. You just sit here, you don't know what I'm talking about? Uh-uh. To this day. Really, though. True, true, true. We finna get ready to drop these phone lines. We got over 200 likes. I'm finna get ready to drop these phone lines. We gonna pay some bills. Uh, and when we get back, I'm gonna, uh, when we get back, we gonna drop the phone lines. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Thundercats, Mole Rats, Water Buffaloes, Alligators, and Haters. Mark your calendar. It's going all the way down. The place to be, Meridian, Mississippi. Queen City Friday Night Comedy Showcase. Bringing out all the big dogs. Friday, April 26th. Get your laugh on with comedian sensation Bubba Dove. Special performances by comedian Scruncho. And the messenger, Keith Wallace. We partying at the Temple Theater, Meridian, Mississippi. Doors open at 8 p.m. Tickets available on Eventbrite or call Big G. And 808-225-9063. Uh, um, shout out to Jit Stanfield. Hey, okay. For dropping that dub. He said, my bad for going on topic. He said, you probably addressed this already. He said, what do you think about uh, the fight with Tyson and Jake Paul? I mean, you know, it's, it's a fight between those two. I got Mike Tyson winning. You know what I mean? That's what I think about it. You know what I mean? It's an opportunity for him to get some money, make him some bread. You know, Jake Paul will make some bread, and um, I'm ride with Mike. You get what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. I've been, I've been, you know what I mean? I'm ride with Mike. I got Mike Tyson um, beating the YouTuber. Uh, myself, so that's what I think about it. Um, anyways, I'm finna get ready to drop these phone lines, man. Y'all call the show, man. Tell me what do you think, man. Do you guys feel that De Deontay Wilder betrayed his fans? You know, did you did you feel that he's a sellout? He sold out. As a matter of fact, no. Nah, let's do this. Let's go to Twitter. Let's go to Twitter. Let's go to Twitter. Let's go to Twitter. Cause I want to say I want to hear what the people saying. Cause we do it in front of people, by the people, other people, because we come from the people. I want to hear what the people say. Let's see what the people. Let's see what the people saying. Let's see the people. They showed the bomb squad up there. Let's see what the people say. Match room. Let's go to match room and see what the people say. You get what I'm saying? And then, well, I, I, was, I was looking at this. I was looking at this yesterday. This guy said team match room all day. So this guy talking about team match room. No, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, anyways. We gonna go. We gonna go look and see what the people are talking about. Because I, I don't. I don't looked at it already. The people. Some people are feeling some type of way about this here. Calling the man to sell out. You know. So he, he betrayed. They feel. They feel that he betrayed Zamunda. Zamunda. He sold out. 
Sold out to the white devil, uh, the, uh, the slave man, the colonizer. Woo, Lord, him up. There's some strong words there. Those are trigger words. Those are words that get people emotionally invested. You get what I'm saying? Um, let me let you guys see this here. Let me let you guys see this here. Yeah, see, I see, I see, I see. I know how to get these Wakanda niggas triggered. I know they trigger words. I know, I know what's gonna get them. I know what's gonna get them riled up. Let's get right here. Texas May say, fighting for the white man, the colonizer, pimping the black man. All that Wilder said about Eddie. Look at him now. Pimp by a white man. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Y'all see that there? They do here say PBC fangirls and LDBC on suicide watch. Hold y'all ain't y'all don't y'all don't see what I'm seeing. This guy right here say, fighting for the white man. The colonizer, pimping the black man, all of that shit Wilder said about Eddie Hearn, look at him now, pimped by the white man. Iris Boston, bro, he said PBC fangirls and LDBC on Suicide Watch. This guy right here say look like Wilder aged overnight. This guy right here say Wilder is only there for one reason. All right, all right, all right. Uh, this guy right here say Wilder is living off three fights with Fury. On which he warned, <laughs> no, Zang is going to hurt him. It's going to hurt him real bad. All right, all right, all right, all right. He's definitely no longer in it for boxing. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. He said Eddie Hearn says Eddie Hearn as he says. He said all the respect to Wilder for taking the fight and not calling Zang a single racist slur. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this guy right here say, is it just me or did everyone low key turn against Wilder? Now, ever since he started working with Eddie Hearn, boxing fans fake as hell. This guy right here said that, is it just him or does it seem like that everyone turned against Wilder now that he started working with Eddie Hearn? You get what I'm saying? And the reason why they turned on him is because he was pushing that narrative for so long. See, that's why. He was pushing that narrative for so long. We finna get ready to drop these phone lines. Yep, that's right. I'm running things. I'm running things. Cream corn. That's why they call me that. Smooth. I got more measure for your pleasure. Stick with me, baby. I'll have you farting through silk. <laughs> and let a nigga mess with me. I'll jump on him. All 93 pounds of pure dynamite. Somebody in the chat said we need to stop uh, 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 stop uh, creating false, false narratives. No, 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 we're not creating false narratives. I just played you the video where he said that Eddie Hearn was the slave master, and uh, you know, his, you know, and all this. I just played you that. That didn't create a false narrative. That came from your king's mouth. The guy that's in the chat. That came from your king's mouth, and I let you hear your leader's mouth jabber the hut of the butter biscuit community. I let you hear his mouth. That came from them. So if there's anyone creating false narratives, it's those guys. I played you the receipts. You heard it yourself. Don't get mad at me. I'm just a messenger. You get what I'm saying? Don't get mad at me. I let you hear what your leader, Jabba the Hutt, said. I let you hear what your king, Deontay Wilder, said. That's what he said. That's what they've been saying for years. And there's a plethora of other receipts out there that I can play. It's a long list of them. If I if I play every receipt, this show will never end. This show will this show, this will be a forty eight hour telethon. If I play all the receipts from two thousand from two thousand fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and now twenty four. If I play all the receipts, if I play all the receipts, you will get you you will get you will get sick at the stomach. Cause now what I'm doing, I'm throwing it right back at you. Um. Caller, hold on. I'm throwing your words right back at you. See, y'all don't like it. See, like, like, like Finesse two times say, it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Fuck them. See, now your words is back. It's come back to bite you in the ass now. You can't handle it. That's why I told you. You probably want to leave, dog. They're unsubscribed, dog. The, the nigga in the chat got a problem. What's his name? NK? You probably want to leave and unsubscribe, dog. This ain't the channel for you. Take your ass back over there where you came from, son. This ain't, this ain't the spot for you. I'm calling. What's your name? You calling from? It's Curtis from Long Beach. Curtis from Long Beach. Talk to me, fam. Man, Wilder finally just realized, man, you can earn with her. You know what I'm saying? So he over there getting this paper, man, and it just shows you. Eddie, I said a lot of shit about Wilder too. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. he on there speaking highly of him, yeah. saying that he gonna stop him within three. You know what I'm saying? And he, 
And that that just shows you, man. Like I've been saying, Eddie Hearn is the best promoter right now by far. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't think very highly of Wilder. And now he ain't there talking highly of Wilder like he ain't said none of that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, he could promote his ass off, man. And, you know, not only did he, he bring Wilder over, he made him the team captain. The team captain. Y'all King is the captain. Team captain. The team captain of Metro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He he's a leader. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. the leader. And he, it's a he, big he, ass car. He, he's the leader. He's the leader of the Slave Masters team. Eddie Hearn. True, true, true. That's yeah, what he said. Man, so that, that what he said. Yeah, that what he said. That what he said. Yeah, y'all already let uh, the people that Wilder had it the first time around talking about it, uh, turning down a hundred and something million. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So man, let that man get his money and be happy for him, man. Did you, know you feel? Like, did you do you feel? Did you feel that he's? Uh, did you feel that Wilder betrayed his fans by signing to the White Devil, Eddie Hearn? Now, when I say white devil, I'm not calling him a white devil. I'm repeating what Jabba the Hutt said, you know, but you know, butter biscuits and crumbs, that, that community. I'm repeating what he said. I played what he said out of his mouth, and this is what they have been saying for years. I have several receipts from Fagnon, Shigo, all of them. I got receipts from all of them, everybody, right? And 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 then you heard what Wilder say. So do you feel that he betrayed his 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 mighty bomb squad nation by signing with the colonizer Eddie Hearn. Hell no! I feel like his nation betrayed him by letting him not uh, fuck with Eddie Hearn in the beginning. Mm. His career would have been better off. You know what I'm saying? Because all those matches, man, I felt Wilder would have won. I mean, he would have beat Dylan White. He would have beat uh, Chisora. You know what I'm saying? He had a great shot against Joshua, and he was gonna make a hundred and some million doing it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I feel like they betrayed him, man. Like, you know, and Wilder see it now because he going back to get that money or, you know, what's left of it. Knowing that he could have had way more, man. So, fuck all that. He betraying them. They they betrayed him because he should have took that deal. All right. All right. Well, let's shout out to Curtis so, Malone. Salute, that's my brother. thought. Thank you, brother. Curtis Malone. Curtis Malone. Yeah, boy. Listen, boy. Look here, boy. We got shit. What we got in here today? We got 820 people watching this show. 500 and uh, we got five, we got over 600 watching on between two YouTube channels, and we have 210 people watching on Twitter. So we got, we got 819 total. I'm looking at it right here to my left. So I'm just saying, man, like, see, what these guys don't like, they don't like when you throw their words back at them. See, they don't want to be held accountable for the shit that they've been doing all of these years on social media. They don't want to be held accountable. They don't, they don't want that. Sorry about that. Let me drop these phone lines. I thought I had a plan. They don't want to be held accountable. That's the issue. They don't want to be held accountable. They just want to let bygones be bygones. No, 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 no. No, we're not. We're not going to do that, sir. What we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to stick to what was being said for years. We're going to stick to what I was being attacked about. You guys attack me, and you guys know me, boy. When you, when you attack, I attack back. So I'm just I'm, I'm a I'm a tick for tack type guy. I can do this shit all motherfucking day. You wanna argue? I can't argue with you. You mad? Look at you. You mad? I don't get paid to argue with you. Who is you? You ain't nobody. Again, this is this is not an attack on Deontay Wilder at all. I'm just stating facts. I'm stating the truth. I'm playing their receipts. I just played the two receipts. I got about 70 more receipts on top of that. I just played the two. If I if I if I play the other 68 receipts I have, this show will never end. This is too easy. This is this is really too easy. So um some people feel they feel that hey man you know he betrayed the bomb squad nation to this day you get what i'm saying um my question i have is okay is eddie Hearn still the devil how do you feel like if i was asking questions like if i was if i was a reporter fly on the wall asking deontay some questions um yeah do you do you feel that do you still feel that eddie Hearn is the devil you know i'm just just asking Hold on. Do, do, you, do you still feel that? You know, do, do you feel comfortable working with the slave master? I'm just asking, you know. Um, call him what you're Hello? Call him. 
Call us. Oh, this call. Jackie Houston calling from Florida. I'm, I'm, I'm back, coach. What's happening? Man, Jackie Houston calling from Florida. Talk to me, brother. Man, do you think when he signed Mark Breeland, he regressed uh, uh, oh. Wilder? Because oh. after, he, after he signed him, that new dude, man, he looked worse. I mean, he looked terrible. And what's the deal with Shakur? Is he going to resign with um, Kyle Wright or what? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's going on with Shakur. I haven't even paid Shakur any attention, to be honest with you. Last time I heard from Shakur, he said he was a, he he was a retired fighter. So I I really don't pay too much attention to Shakur Stevenson. Um, when he gets back in the ring, when it's time for him to fight, I don't. I don't. We'll see. But what he gonna do? What he, what he does and what he doesn't going not going to do? I have no idea. I don't. I don't, be honest, I don't keep up with him. Okay, because one what, what thing I can say, you got some sound effects on deck like Jerry Pony back in the 90s. Yes, sir. <laughs> All Trill, right, go to the college Trill, football, the Pensacola. Trill. Yeah, man, shout out to Jackie Houston, man. Pensacola, stand up. Yeah, man, Pensacola, Florida. Yeah, man, phone lines over, man. 530-494-9636. 530-494-9636. Phone lines open, man. Y'all call the show, man. Like, again, you know, now, my position is I don't feel that Deontay Wilder sold out. I don't feel that. You know what I mean? I feel that Deontay Wilder woke up and realized. Uh, shout, out to, shout out to Real Dude Uprising. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a bail dub on your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Jack received Playtime's over, boy. boy. <laughs> hey, real dude, I'd rather say the day Wilder beats Zane is the day he'll, you know, he, he gets um, an ice machine. And, and you, know, you know what I noticed in that press conference, what he said yesterday? He said that, uh, he said that uh, this fight would tell whether I still have it or whether I don't. So this going to be the last fight. This potentially going to be the last fight. Um, he's not the same person anymore. And he's not the same person since Tyson Fury. Let's not diminish what Tyson, bro, like, that Tyson Fury fight, real dude uprising, took everything out of him. His pride would not allow him to let it go after the first fight. And because they didn't want to work with Anthony Joshua, because Eddie Hearn was the devil and all that stuff there, they kind of, like, tried to freeze Joshua out. I remember this shit. You know, we're going to make our own big fight, me and Tyson Fury. We don't need Joshua. You know, Tyson Fury, a real warrior. You called this man out of retirement. He was 700 pounds, you know, uh, drinking shandies, drinking uh, cases of shandies every day, drinking pictures of shandies every day, uh, smoking crack. You brought him out of retirement. He had a couple of fights, came to America, fought you, and then Tyson Fury became more popular than Deontay Wilder in America but because the way he rose from the grave like The Undertaker in the first fight. They thought he was knocked out, and he, he, he was knocked out for like three seconds, and Jack Reese was counting, and then he got up, he opened his eyes at like six, and then when he got to eight, he started getting up, and then 10, he was on his feet, and, and then it, 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 it was a, it was a, a drama-filled fight. And Wilder was doing the shit, he's shaking his shoulders, blowing kisses, and then he looked to his left and was like, what? This motherfucker got up? He got up? You get what I'm saying? Wilder was like, this motherfucker, he got up. He got up, rose from the grave, and then, and then Tyson Fury went on a world tour, an, 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 an apology tour. Yeah, man, you know, uh, you know uh, I did this for the kids. <laughs> so Tyson Fury fooled everybody. He fooled <laughs> Hey, he fooled everybody. Man came to your country, became more popular, popular than you. He rose from the grave. Then he, then he was on he was on Howard Stern, Joe Rogan. He was on, they were talking about him on WWE, how he stood up like the Undertaker and all this stuff there. And he would do it. He went on a world tour. He had a book deal. They came out with a documentary about him. I said, <laughs> I said Wilder was 38 hot. You know, I did this for the kids. I did it for the children. All of those who need help out there. All of those who need hope out there. You can do it. You know, right? Look at me. Look at me. Me, Pappy. You know, look at me. Me, 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 me Pappy tried to tell me. I was 700 pounds smoking cracks. You know, shiver me timbers. A whore there. I was 700 pounds smoking cracks. You know, I was drinking, drink, drinking um, pictures of, of shandies every day. You know, I was out of shape. And, and I did it. Deontay Wilder, you know, the, the, the bronze bomber, the bomb squad, he called me the big dosser. And I told him, I said, you give me two fights. I promise you in the third fight, I'll come to your country and fight you. Me's a fight. I'm a fighting man. Me's, me, I'm a fighting man. They brought the gyps over there. He came, you know, the shit backfired. He came up. Wilder, Wilder didn't want to let it go. 
Why did he want to let it go? You ran the man down and, 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 and talked the man talked the man into an ass whooping. You know what I mean? And then you ran it back with him, and then he knocked you out and, and, and had everybody thinking you were dead. Because I definitely thought you were dead that third fight. I was like, God damn, he don't kill them. Um, Carla, hold on. I like, I mean, God damn, he don't kill the man. Shit, you know what I mean? So, listen, them Tyson Fury fights took a lot out of him. I'm um, sorry to Keith Bulldogs. Hey, okay. This show is sponsored today by Keith Bulldogs. He dropped a half a half a hundo for dropping that half a bam hundo on your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Jack received. Playtime's over, boy. boy. Keith, what you say, fam? You said we needed some support. Salute, fam. Man, shout out to Keith Bulldogs. Today's show is sponsored by Keith Bulldogs. Salute to you, fam. Thank you so much, brother, for the support. Down from the there's a platform stage. Um, uh, Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? Red Stripe, Atlanta. Red Stripe from Atlanta. Talk to me. Yes, um, I was just calling and say, um, I'm a Deontay Wilder fan, but I definitely don't think he's so sold out. Um, uh, I think what he's doing now is maybe five, six years too late. Um, mm. uh, he missed a whole um, range of people. To I can't hear you, man. No, sir. I can't hear you. I can barely hear you. Yeah, it still sounds the same. Yeah, just, hey, just, just, yeah, just, just call back um, when you when you get out of get out of that area. All right, he got a call back. Shout out to Red Stripe, man. Um, as I said, me personally, I think, I think, I think Wilder, I think Wilder did the right thing. Personally, I think Wilder did the right thing. You got to drop your pride. Stop trying to pin the two. To shout out to uh, Marty King Boston dropping that two dollar super chat. He said Wilder soft now. No, 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 no. Um, I think I'm telling you. See, see, I'm see me, me. I'm not listen. I'm not on that Wakanda shit. I ain't on that Wakanda shit. I'm telling you right now. This America, this capitalism. Wilder did the right thing. You don't be trying to pander to a bunch of to a to a to a to a to a, uh, to, a uh, to a bunch of to a pseudo follower to a bunch of pseudo followers. Anyways, no pseudo means fake. You know what I mean? You know this fake. I mean this fake phony shit. That's what pseudo is. Like you don't try to you don't try to pander to a bunch of broke niggas from from the butter biscuit the butter biscuit community anyways. I'll call it, hold on. Cause your reality your reality is not their reality. Whatever racial insecurities that they have, they can't project their racial insecurities onto you. You ain't had no been trying to lead them fools anyways. You got two white managers off the rail. Who help you make millions of dollars the way you at now? Why? Why even try to pander to these? Why even try to pander to these goddamn shape by the left type revolutionaries? Them niggas ain't nobody to pander to. You did right. Go over there, sign the Eddie Hearn. Let them know. Hey, look, man. I know I said you were the slave master dog. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. I know I said you were the slave master. You was the devil. I apologize. I know I had a cult like following online. To this day, I apologize. Let you let bygones be bygones. And man, let me go ahead and sign with you. So shit, I get it. I ain't, you know, I ain't mad at him myself, you know. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you from? Hey, hey, Coach. This is uh, Rob Knox from D.C., man. Um, my point of view on what, what you're talking about on the show today as far as Beyonce Wilder, I think that he's, uh, you know, I don't think that he's sold out. I think you know, he knows he's washed up, so he's trying to grab his last bag before he leaves the sport. You know what I mean? That's, you know, pretty much my call. I love the show. Um, I also wanted to ask you, where you coming to that fight, uh, those fights that's going on in Calvert County, Maryland, uh, in June? In June? Um, no, sir. I didn't even know anything about him. Okay. I, I, I didn't know anything about him. That's my call. All right, salute, man. Shout out to Rob Knox, man, D.C. <laughs> Y'all didn't even know anything about him, brother. Shit, June, June, my June schedule so hectic, man. I, I'm doing a lot of traveling in June, so, um, yeah, my June schedule kind of hectic. So, 
Um, anyway, shout out, man, shout out to Moise. Moise, what's going on, sis? Shout out to Marty King Boston. He said reality is kicking in. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, listen, listen, listen. As I said before, and I say this on this show all the time, some fighters who are making millions of dollars, who are privileged black men, they should not be taking financial advice from niggas on YouTube who got a net worth of two figures. Six and seven figure niggas don't take advice from two and one, from one and two figure niggas. True, true, true. Nigga, you a cool. All, all listen, all they gonna do is call you some names. That's about it. They, you know, the names ain't gonna, you can't uh, call, hold on. All they gonna do is call you some names. That's, that's about it. The names don't mean shit. They hold no power. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, nigga, you this, you that. You this, you that. Yeah, but your king. Your king is, 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 is signed to Eddie Hearn. You heard what Jabba the Hutt say. He said, man, it hurts me to my stomach, even though it hurts me to my stomach. And I got four of them. But it hurts me to my stomach that, you know, he signed to the, to, the, to the white devil, Eddie Hearn. But it is what it is. He did what he had to do. Like, really? Um, call him, what's your name? Where you calling from? Uh, Randy from the UK. Shout out to Randy from the UK. Talk to me. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, talk talk to me, fam. Well, yeah, I don't think he's sold out. Like, it makes no sense to be loyal in boxing. Um, Sir, this conversation... Can you hear me, sir? Because this is a dead conversation. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, go ahead. So you said it makes no sense to be loyal in boxing. Um, that That's all you have? Yeah, like... Pretty much, yeah. There's no loyalty in boxing, and who's gonna turn down millions of pounds of dollars? Yeah, I get it. You're right about that. All right, shout out to Randall from the UK. Salute. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah. So, uh, no, no. You know, he did. He did the right thing. He did the right thing. And listen, man. Don't be sitting there listening to these goddamn niggas trying to pander to these niggas, all that stuff there, because you trying to you trying to create a perception that yeah, man, I'm standing ten toes down, dog. Yeah, man, I got the man. I don't want. I don't want them looking at me no way, any kind of way. Who gives a damn about what the hell these niggas think about? Yeah, man, my stomach's hurting. My stomach's hurting right now. You know, you listen, you, you heard Jabba the Hutt. Y'all heard Jabba? Yeah, man, my stomach's hurting right now, man. It pains me. And, 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 and again, and again, I want to I wanna, I wanna give it some context. Hold on. Got another call. Got another call. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you call her from? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, uh, you yeah. say you said what you say. Um, you say uh, Nate from the UK or Nigel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Nate from the UK. What's good, coach? All uh, right, Nate from the UK. Talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, so first of all, you know, regarding the uh, water situation, coach. Mm. You know, I remember day days that day days that from Friday. Because you know, when I was young, I always said I love the hood. I'll never leave the hood. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as I got my check, I was gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But nah, you know, all, 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 you know, all jokes aside, um, I think it's a good move for Wilder. Um, you know, I think it's quite funny we're talking about a guy having to change the narrative when really he's his own words that set the narrative. Mm. And I think you're doing the right thing, Colts, by bringing it up and really kind of trying to educate people to say, you know, let's stop bringing these silly narratives into boxing. Let's focus on the boxing and obviously see the best guys face the best. Yeah. And obviously the fighters get, you know, the, you know, the, the amount of money that they deserve. Um, I think there's too many promoters at the moment, you know, running boxing, you know, like the Bob Arams, and I respect the big big names, but I think the fighters definitely need to take control um, of, you know, of, of, of boxing and um, have better fights. Um, other than that, uh, last thing as well, Coach, I'm happy that Bill Haney, um, not, uh, Devin Haney put hands on Ryan Garcia, so they're living <laughs> up to what he said. Bill Haney said to us, when we asked him if he's going to put hands on foot on him <laughs> and then put hands on foot on him. So, bless up to the All, All America 420. You know what I'm saying? He's going to get smoked. Um, hopefully, tank, you know, the, the tank fight gets announced soon so you can have a good time in Texas, coach. Yeah. Silly said one in the chat. Nick dog, no hey, cap. Hey, man, uh, salute, man. Up. Shout out to Nate, man. You can't stand up, man. Yeah, man. Hey, I saw that. Hey, look here, man. Hey, where, where Keena at? Keena. I saw, and the Kena, I did, I saw when uh, uh, Devin Haney slapped. <laughs> he slapped Ryan Garcia. That's what I say. 
You know what I mean? They do do say, nah, coach, he ain't slap him. He pushed him in the face. Man, look like a slap to me. True, true, true. Yeah, hey, Chase, hey, listen. It looked like he slapped the taste out of Kare Kare Ryan Garcia's mouth. Slapped all that. Slapped the, slapped the guy line off his face. What did the five fingers say to the face? Slap? Said slap the taste out of his mouth. That's what I saw. <laughs> You know what I mean? Ryan Garcia was laughing. He was like, he was like, ah! <laughs> right? <laughs> Ryan Garcia, I ain't gonna lie, man. Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney cracked me up today, man. Um, shout out to Ryan Garcia and, and Devin Haney, man. Shout out to both of them boys. Um, Carla, what's your name you calling from? What's up, Coach? M1 from the BX. M1 from the BX, talk to me. What's up, man? Let me get my hate on, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Wilder, man. Mr. Daddy Hearns, you know, glad for him. And um, I'm also glad that um, yesterday's price and today's, uh, ain't today's price, you know what I'm saying, ain't uh -huh. no longer with Earl Spence, you know what I'm saying, let me get my hate on today, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, I don't like that dude, but, um, you know, shout out to Wilder, man. You know, fuck them dudes. All right, man. Well, shout right, out. That's all I got. Shout out to Irwin, man, from the Bronx. Yeah, man, get your money, man. Hey, hey, man. Hey, hey, look, hey, look here, man, man. Go get your money, man. Go get your money, man. Shout out to the Undisputed Talk. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a bam dub on your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Jack received. Playtime's over, boy. Boy. <laughs> he said, Wilder ran to the slave master. He was tired of being free. I was tired. He said uh, he said he said to get TKO to KO by Zang for the last big payday. And while the beat Zang, I'll be shocked. Um, yeah, man, I don't I don't I don't know, man. Um, um I, I was looking at the press conference and you know Wilder Wilder seemed like he was happy, man. He was real happy, man. Like for real though. Down from the bar, there's a platform like he look, he look real, he look real happy to me. You get what I'm saying? Like, like from what I saw, from what I saw, he look real happy. You get what I'm saying? You know, he look real happy. You know, I mean, like I never would have thought this picture would be this picture. You, you get what I'm saying? No, he look, he look real happy right here, man. You know, you feel me? You know, whole lot of you know the shindig. This shindig right there, you get what I'm saying? Like, you know, hold on, as a matter of fact, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me download this one here. Let me download this one. You know, because I, I got this from, I told you, I got this topic from yesterday. Some people felt like, wow, the soul out of this and that. And I'm like, man, that man ain't, that man, come on, man, that man, that man getting his paper, man. You know, I know he went back to the master, but, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, shit, you know, he, he did what he had to do. He did what he had to do. You know, we got to keep that same narrative now because that's what was being said. You know, that's what was being said now. So that's all that that's that that's all I'm saying, fam. You know, I'm saying what I'm saying. What 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 uh what, what Coach Malachi is saying, I'm saying, look, man, the man, the man, the man did the right thing. You ever seen y'all y'all seen that movie by Spike Lee, Do the Right Thing? Y'all seen Do the Right Thing, right? The man did the right thing. Do the right thing like Spike Lee. The man did the right thing. Yeah, as you can see right here, I didn't sell out. I bought in. See, Wilder didn't sell out. I don't want nobody. I don't want nobody from McConnell to call it Deontay Wilder to sell out. He didn't sell out. He bought in. He didn't sell out. He bought in. You know. Apparently, the butter biscuits. The butter biscuits was good over there. <laughs> Shout out to Yamas, man. Yamas, what's going on, brother? Shout out to Yamas. You know, the butter biscuits was good over there, Master Room. <laughs> <laughs> As Tariq Nasheed would say, shout out to Tariq Nasheed. That you know, that's what that's what Tariq Nasheed and Dr. Umar Johnson say. Tariq Nasheed and Dr. Umar, they be killing me with that. Yes, lick, lick your family. You know, Tariq Nasheed is smack. He'll put that chapstick on. Family, see, see what it is. Family, the tethers are trying to take out take the resources of foundation of black Americans and see what it is family. What happens is when, when the butter biscuits are better, when, 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 um, um, call it, hold on. When see, see, see what it is family. When the coons think that the butter biscuits are better 
you know, on master's plantation. Then that's when, you know, family, that's when they leave and go straight. Now, those are not my talking points. I'm just making mockery of, you know, people who feel this way. You know, I'm just saying, man, what you expect the man to do? You know, okay, what you expect the man to do? You get what I'm saying? You go to Popeye's? You know, and, and you know, you like the biscuits, right? But Popeye's chicken, and then you got Church's chicken. Who got who got the better biscuits? Church's or Popeye's? I'll let you decide. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you call it from? What's up, Coach? It's Martin from Jersey. Martin from Jersey, talk to me. Yo, Coach, I, 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 you know what? It's better late than never for a while, but I think he just realized that uh, if, he's, if he's the smartest guy in his, in, in, in his surroundings, hmm. You need to get new friends. You know what I'm saying? Because he, 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 at this point, you need to stop listening to all them dumb, dumb dudes talking all that. You know, race hustling stuff, and yeah. you know, you realize you know what the money is at, so he's not where where Eddie. You know, I was actually shocked when I seen him pull the mask off. I'm like, oh, Wilder. You know, um, you know, um, I think he's gonna lose that fight, but it's like. Uh, Ring IQ, he made a good analysis is that Zane will give him a, a chance to release that right hand, mm -hmm. you know, because he, he's not a prolific puncher like, like they say, um, Parker. Parker could stay busy cause he's constantly throwing, throwing punches, and, you know, Zane takes his time. But it should be a good fight, you know, nice fight. I like the car too. The whole car is is, is back. It's, it's pretty good. Pretty good fight. Yeah, car. A lot of guys, people uh, here in America don't know don't know who they are, but it's a pretty good fight. All right. Well, shout out to uh, Martin from Jersey. Salute, fam. Big city, stand up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I say, but I want to see how they try to niggas playing this here. Uh, uh, call it, what's the name Reaching out with an important reminder. Hold on. What the hell is? Is that a telemarketer? Who this is? Reaching out with a point reminder. Point reminder of what? Who the fuck is this? Somebody called from St. Louis. Let me see what's up. Sound like a damn telemarketer. I, I, wonder, I wonder was that my kid's school? Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Coach. It's uh, Tony from Chicago. Tony from the shot. Talk to me. Tony from the shot. Okay. Um, you know, to weigh in on the, on the topic, um, firstly, you know, Finally, Wilder came to his senses. Mm. Um, only a fool, only a foolish person um, blocks the channel where you can make money. Also, it's shown that in, in all these things, Eddie Hearn has been the bigger person. Because imagine if the shoe was the other way. With with the kind of things they said and, the, the, you know, the kind of action they did on that side of the street, if the shoe was on the other foot, would they be so willing to do business with somebody else? So that should be another lesson. Mm -hmm. Learn how to be the bigger person. As for all the, the other people with contrary opinions mm -hmm. or thinking, oh, he sold out, why the hell does your opinion matter? Your opinion doesn't matter to anybody. You know, he sold out, well, he's getting money. He didn't sell out, he's getting money. So your opinion does not change anything. People should stop feeling like um, their opinion, uh, you know, changes, you know, changes anything. Your opinion isn't important. All that is important is that this man gets paid for doing a dangerous job, and that's it. And, you know, entertains us in the process in the process mm -hmm. every other thing is inconsequential that's all i want to say coach all right, thank shout you out, shout out to tony man yeah tony tony feels tony tony feels that deontay wilder is not a sellout i me personally i'm not saying wilder sold out i know wilder felt like you know uh jostle was uncle tom and you know uh, eddie Hearn. Slave master, this and that. I know he said all of that. Him and his minions, him and the butter biscuit crew, the butter biscuits. We go, you know, you know what? Uh, we go. If, if, if we had a, if they had an R and B group, if they had an R and B group, it'd be Jabba the Hutt 
and the butter biscuits. You know how you have, uh, you know, uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes. You have David Ruffin and the Temptations, Ralph Tresvant, Ralph Tresvant and New Edition. We have Jabba the Hutt and the Butter Biscuits. And, you know, Jabba the Hutt is the lead singer. He's the one that orchestrate all of the Butter Biscuit read. And the Butter Biscuits, their job is to go around social media and leave digital bread, leave digital um, Butter Biscuit crumbs everywhere. True, true, true. That's their job. When it, but when it comes, when the rubber hits the road and it's time to get some money, you know, I told you guys, you know, like, like when these guys up top had this kind of money, they don't do skin color politics. Why to try that shit and you still ain't got them? Because you're trying to pin it to a group, to, you're trying to pin it to a bunch of fools on YouTube and on Twitter. You don't pin it to a bunch of to, to a bunch of um, fools. The same niggas who, the same niggas who, yeah, man, when you know, um, you know, when you was at home minding your own business, and you know, and and and, and the white man made the statue for you. I'm call hold on. And the white dude made the statue for you. Created a statue for you, and they came. They all of them came to Alabama to see they came statue. Talk you out of retirement. Came out of retirement. You beat Robert Alenius, and then you know you lost to uh, Joseph Parker, right? And um, so you know you get what I'm saying. So Wilder got to do what he got to do for him. He don't. He don't listen. He don't owe nobody nothing. Wilder don't owe me nothing, and he damn sure don't owe Jabba the Hutt and and the Butter Biscuits nothing. The butter business is still the butter business is still at home at their mama's house or at their apartments talking about signing the contract. 60, 40, 70, 30, 80, 20, take whatever we give you. I got shooters. When I see you, it's on site. They still threatening threatening niggas digitally online, but ain't hard to fly. They still doing that. You living in the mansion. Don't be listening to them niggas. That's all I'm saying. Um, Carla, what's your name? What you call it from? Yo, coach, it's Rick from Toronto, man. Yo, you on fire, man, this week. It's only Tuesday, coach. You killing me with them jokes, man. It's fucking wicked. You you having a strong start off to the week, coach. But seriously, you know what? You taking them back to the schoolyard days, man? You would be the last dude to be in, in, in between a fight because you be instigating shit, and I love it, man. It's fucking hilarious. And you, coach, you better watch out, man. Because, like, if uh, Jabba Hunt, uh, Fagnon and Seagulls, and if they power up like the Power Rangers up against you, man, I don't know, Coach. I don't know if you can handle that heat. You call it you call it instigating, but really, I'm not instigating. All I'm doing is I'm bringing light to the reality of the situation. This is the shit that I've been saying since I started my YouTube channel, and I have been proven right yet again. Um, just to buy this particular signing right here. All I'm doing is just playing receipts and I'm reminding the fools what they said. That's all I'm doing. I stand corrected, coach. You're not instigating. You, 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 tell, you tell you showing factual truth to the, to the actual observation. I see what you say, man. But like in, in all sense, butter biscuits and, and crumbs. Come on, man. Coach, you killing me, man. I have a shout out to Tony from, uh, what's your, uh, shout out to, uh, you, you from Toronto, right? What's your name is, brother? Rick. Shout out to Rick from Toronto. Salute. <laughs> yeah, man, see, 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 what it is is, what it is is, like, again, as I said before, man, and, and, y and Yamis says this all the time. Shout out to Yamis, because Yamis say this all the time. He said, yo, man, business don't work that like that, bro. I keep telling y'all, man, like, y'all got to start following this pseudo bullshit, man. This fake, these fake narratives, this pseudo shit. You know, you got to start following these dudes who suffer from the, you know, who participate in the Victim Olympics and who suffer from, and who suffer from, um, you know, like, these guys have racial in inferiorities themselves in their lives and they like to project. You know, a lot of these guys is losers. They ain't got nothing going on in their life. So, you know, they, they, they their life is I'm going to go online and, you know, be be all I can be online, in chats, and talk tough. Like, again, as I said before, uh, you know, I've encountered all of these tough guys on YouTube. All of them. These some tough-ass niggas, bro. Like, all, all, all it, but, but in reality, all the tough niggas I know, all the tough niggas I know, they dead and in jail. All the tough niggas I know, they dead or in jail. Now you could be tough on you could be tough on YouTube. You could be tough behind the camera. 
but when but, but when the boots hit the but when the boots hit the ground, you know what I mean? That, that, that's that's a whole nother ball game. So I just called it the way I see it. I'm not gonna let these fools forget all the shit they started, what happened. Not gonna let them forget that. Especially now that you're king. And as a matter of fact, let's do a recap. Let's do a quick recap because I don't want nobody thinking just in case somebody just tuning in, just in case somebody just tuning in and, I'm, and they thinking and they thinking that, oh, man, that nigga making it up. He making it up. You know, why are we tripping about Deontay? See, this is why this is important. Let me show you this. This is so important. I'm going to tell you why. Just real sorry for the fighters. That's under the stable, you know what I mean? Because that is his true mindset, to be a slave master. And like I, I, I've said it before, that's another thing I've told him during the Joshua uh, the negotiation stuff. I said, them slave masters. And, you know, and, and I, I guarantee you their family was slave masters at one point in time. I guarantee you it. For him to say that, that is crazy. And I just feel sorry for the fighters that's under the stable, you know what I mean? Because that is his true mindset to be a slave master. And like I, I've said it before, that's another thing I've told them during the Joshua uh, the negotiation stuff. I said, them slave masters. And you know, and, and I, I guarantee you their family was slave masters at one point in time. I guarantee you it. For him so, what about JD's and Shelly Finkel? What about Danalo and Crowley? What about the white guy who built your statue? All, all five of those people I just mentioned were white. Do they, you know, you think their family had slave masters? You didn't have no problem working with them. And then you got Jabba the Hutt over here. Jabba the Hutt, the leader of the Butter Biscuit community. We got the leader of the Butter Biscuit community. Let's see, there. Hold on, hold on, let's, hold on. let's see right here. Let's, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go back right here. You know what I mean? But it's good to see Champ right back in the ring. He just fought earlier this year. Fought Joseph Parker, and now he's right back in the ring um, as he should be. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think that was December when he fought Parker, I believe. But you know, he's right back. Should be. I think this card is taking place in June, mm -hmm. so hopefully um, there's no injuries and nothing, no weirdo stuff going on, and everybody get to go ahead and uh, uh, you know come into the ring healthy, and we get to see Deontay Wilder come out on top. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm backing. That's what I'm riding with. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, my stomach hurt uh, uh, seeing Wilder up there with the devil. Not a devil, but the devil. Edward Hearn. But it must be done. Business is business. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. 78 Sports TV. Salute to them. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. So, it, 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 so you heard it. You heard it from the leader. You heard, you heard it from Jabba the Hutt. It must be done. It must be done. Wilder didn't sell out. He bought in. Pretty white teeth is. His hair cut. His hair cut. He looks very, very happy. Him and Edward Hearn, they look very happy together. No Diddy. Shaking hands. Taking all types of pictures. This is what's going on. Wake up from your delusion. Wake up from your delusion. When I told you niggas Wakanda is dead, I meant that. Call her, hold on. When I told you, I say, look, Wakanda is dead. It's over. I wasn't joking when I said that. Oh, Lord, I swear to God, when I see the whole ass nigga close me like how ways I'm going to put them paws on them. Nigga, Wakanda forever, bitch. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, he threw Wakanda through that fence. Wakanda is dead, oh, Lord. I was serious about that. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? Whatever, though, Carla. It's Trillion Dollar Dreams out of Detroit. Can you hear me? Detroit. Trillion Dollar Dreams. Yes, sir. Yeah. Man, uh, I think I think Waller made a, a a good move, man. You know, I'm I'm really getting tired of seeing all the, the narratives of boxing other than it being a sport and a business. And a business before it's a sport. People are in this to make money. You're risking your life. You know, I, I never got the, I never understood why people was taking all these stances on like racial issues and boxing. It's kind of weird to me. 
especially in 2024 when it's like you really can't do nothing too racial right now, man, without getting sued or, you know what I mean? You can't even call somebody, you can't even call a a, a, a woman who wants to be called a man a, a woman. So it's like, it's too sensitive right now. So this whole like racial thing and the stuff people be pushing, man, I'm really over that. It's boxing. He's making a business decision. Yeah, he's selling out. Because he's a commodity, so he's selling himself. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, he's a business, man. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's, just, that's just what it is. You ain't got the bag. Oh, okay, he got the bag. Okay, I'm going with him. He got the bag. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's a business. People need to get off of that. I can't believe 7 Day Sports TV said it makes the stomach hurt. Like, I don't know, bro. Like, they should have never rolled with them, that type of... That shouldn't have been y'all, 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 uh, y'all push anyway from the get go. Yeah. Racial narrative like that. That's because it's always going. You always going to contradict yourself when it's when it's money involved. Yeah, Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're going to go where the where the most money at. Yeah. See. 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 The issue. You know? the, so, issue the issue. This is the issue, though. The issue is, you know, I told you we are in the celebrity worship culture. So in boxing, these fighters are looked upon as celebrities. These promotional companies and promoters are looked upon as celebrities. So um, you have grown men that are my age and younger and older. They um, look took this upon themselves to make deities of certain fighters and deities of promotional companies and promoters. And they created this pseudo reality in their mind, meaning fake. And in their mind, they're fighting this type of revolution that doesn't exist, you know, and, don't we, even you know, exist. we got to come together and collectivize and uh, to go against the man while at the same time attacking others who look like you, which now makes your group even more marginalized. Because you already speaking from a position of weakness already. Now you marginalizing your group even smaller by attacking those that look like you who are not down with your code or your talking points. So now, you know, yeah. you have an inferior True. message. You're teaching your people that you are inferior to another man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this trillion dollar dream before I let you go. Every, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to let you go. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. No, nah, I, I, I just don't see how we can all, how everybody can be on that type of time and it's like, you gonna work for a white man every day, nine times out of ten, most of y'all. Like me, I'm a self contractor, I got my own small business, um, my own trucking company. But at the end of the day, the people I'm getting loans for is named as Mercs and different these different Jewish names. And not only am I a black man, I'm Muslim too. So it's like I been got past that. Like I'm not in that mindset, like we doing business out here at the end of the day. Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't care all I care about is my children, if they can eat it, if they can eat food, if I can make money, you know what I mean? I'm not going to do nothing to compromise my integrity. And at the same time, I realize that I'm doing business with people. He got to eat like me. He needs something done. I need some. I need to earn a living. It's, it's like giving, it's like giving take, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. All that, uh, that race and narrative narratives need to go down the drain, especially in boxing, man. It's a sport. It's a business. That's it. All right, salute, man. Shout out to Trillion Dollar Dream. Detroit, stand up. Detroit versus everybody. <laughs> Detroit versus everybody. I did this. This is another thing, right? I'm going to tell you how stupid this is. Why would I brag about all, why would I brag all day about how great and evil another group of people are and how they are dominating me. Yo, man, the racist white supremacy and it hurt the white double. See how they doing us? See, this how they treat us. But yet you're a king and you're a god. I'm not Coach Malachi. I ain't going to be talking about how another man or another group of people are dominating me. If I feel that I'm a king and a god. Do you know how stupid that sounds? You are arguing from a position of weakness already. That's why your woman, that's why your woman don't respect you. A woman can't respect the man who talking about some young man. Look how they doing that, baby. 
Look how they doing that. Man, they oppress the other, keep them up down. What shit? They ain't oppress Floyd. Floyd, Floyd fly around in private jets. Holler about he got skyscrapers in Dubai and in New York. And, you know, look like he the same color as me. How come he ain't getting no press? Shit, did I tell you why? I'm calling her though. Wilder sitting there holding hand with Eddie Hearn. Look like he got, look like he doing fine to me. Shit, Javante David, look like he doing good. He dancing with, uh, um, he dancing with, uh, A.B. and Richards and Hitches. You know, dancing. Look like he doing good to me. You got examples of all these people who look like you, who doing good, yet you trying to sell me on victimology. Okay. Um, call what's your name you call it from? Leo H-Town, Coach. Leo H-Town, talk to me. Hey, hey Coach, I mean, it, it goes like this, man. They say they don't want to buy from the white man. The white man rules all. But then you got the black and brown man. They both got a store. And Mr. Johnson, we start buying from Mr. Johnson. We start buying from Mr. Mendes. And in a couple of years, Mr. Johnson and Mendes are driving Benzes. Now they're driving Benzes in the neighborhood. Now people start thinking like, man, they're doing better than us. Fuck that. I'd rather go to Walmart. He's charging a little too much. No, nah, man, no. Nah. You can't see nobody. It, 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 it's in the culture of, of Americanized Latinos and Americanized blacks because first generation Americans like myself, I, I don't think like that. But I've seen it with a lot of the real Chicano Chicanos that are a couple of years in. They don't they don't like seeing other Chicanos do good. You know? Then you rather go shop somewhere else. You rather go spend your money somewhere else. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. I have somebody I have somebody at my door, hold on. Y'all hold on. Y'all hold on. Hold on for a minute. I'm at somebody at my door. All right, I'm back, fam. I'm back. I'm back. Hold on. I'm back. Hold on. Let me All right. right. So right. Go, ahead. Good, Go ahead, Leo. Yeah, Coach. So, I mean, that's the problem is, is a lot of the real Americanized minorities, they, they start thinking that somebody else is doing better than you now is holding you down, and, and now you, you mad he's doing good. But then you don't go spend your money with the white man, then blame the white man for holding you down. It don't make no sense. You know, it, it's, just, it's just like that victim mentality that, that's put in them because as a, is a very entitled culture, the American culture. So that's why you see Jamaicans and Africans and Mexicans uh, that are first generation, they're excelling here because they don't have that Americanized entitlement coach. You know what I mean? Yeah, where, I mean where they feel their first job, they're is, supposed to make $40 an hour, the first job. It's, 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 it's definitely a cultural thing. It's definitely a cultural thing. Right here in America, I do agree with that. And uh, people just got to understand what group economics is and stuff like that. But but, but it is what it is. Uh, shout, hey. out, shout out to Leo for me, Sean. Uh, thank you for calling, sir. All right, sir. But, but, but as I said before, when I was in the nation of Islam, I was taught that the black man is the original man. And the black man is the owner, the maker, the cream of the planet Earth. Uh, God of the universe, master of the universe, talk about that, master of the universe. If I am to believe that, if I am to believe that I am a king, because Dr. Umar Johnson called me king, the sisters who are part of Uplifting Brothers call me a king, stuff like that. How you doing, king? This and that, this and that. If I am to believe that I am a king, I have to live up to that title. You just can't call a man the king if he ain't living up to the title. You can't call a woman the queen if she ain't living up to the title. You can't have it both ways. <clears throat> you can't believe that you're a king and I'm a, a ruler at one point, but you're bragging about how someone is ruling and dominating you. Man, I can't do yet because they, look what they doing to me. What they doing to you, sir? 
See how they oppressing us? Look how they doing Wilder. How they doing Wilder? The nigga ride around the jets. Nigga got a boatload of money. Got $40, 50 million dollar net worth. Living in mansions. Flying around the world. How they doing them? Yeah, man, them slave contracts. Slave contracts? What, millions of dollars? Jets? Uh, mansions? You know, finest clothes? Women and exotic women? What, 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 what you talking about? See, they go to creating this pseudo reality in their mind. And they deify these men in sports entertainment. And this is why they get so offended when you're not on their code. See, if you don't think like the victim, then the victim gets upset and attacks out of that pain. I'm hurt that you don't see things my way. You are cool. You a sellout. Okay, you sound cool, I'm a sellout. Why do you say that, sir? You, what you mean why I say that? Like these, I'm like telling these niggas suffer from gooch. That's why I showed y'all the gooch grease. The gooch grease. A lot of these niggas got gooch grease, man. Like you got to check these niggas maxi pad, man. Like some of these dudes got the maxi pad. And I'm like, I'm glad, me personally, I'm glad Wilder woke up. I'm glad Wilder woke up. I'm here to tell, listen, I'm here to tell you because of niggas from the Alph Alphabet Boy community. Deontay Wilder did not sell out. He bought in. True, true, true. Listening to you, li 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 listening to the Wakanda, li listening to the niggas over there, the Alphabet Boy community, he, he was the reason why, he, he y'all was the reason why he turned down the $100 million the first time. To this day. Y'all don't radicalize Wilder. Y'all don't got close to Deontay Wilder. And you don't radicalize the man, and the man lost his way listening to Jabba the Hutt and Butter Biscuits. Yeah, I said it. Uh, call her, what's your name? Where you calling from? Coach, it's Tony from Chicago, two times. Tony, two times, talk to me. Yeah, Coach, um, just, you know, I'm going to key into what the other caller said. The problem, the, the point is this. Um... There's a saying we have in Africa, like, um, when, a poor, when a rich man is sleeping, he sleeps with an eye open. So that if somebody comes to grab his money at night, he will, um, he will be aware and awake to stop the person. But if a poor man is sleeping, he's dreaming that by the time he wakes up, the world should have ended. So everybody can start all over again. So, anybody you hear talking bad, oh, the white man, the white devil, is because he has, there is no white devil close to him to do business with him. So, it's kind of jealousy. So, he's hoping, you know, oh, if I can't beat them, then, you know, let me give them a bad name. When I cannot conquer somebody, let me give the person a bad name. If you heard, um, what's his name? Uh, Big Baby. Go back, watch the um, the press conference for the, I think it was the knockout chaos. Well, the fight, uh, Dubois versus uh, Jaron Miller. Jaron Miller said something. He said, look, Eddie, sometimes you got to pay me more. But unlike the other promoters, you pay on time. You always pay on time. That's why I love you. Have you ever had anybody leave match room? Or stop doing matchroom and complain about, oh, he wasn't paid, or he wasn't paid on time, or, no. So, when you listen to all that, and when you put all that into, you know exactly what it is. It's jealousy, it's envy. Jabba the Hutt, uh, you know, was saying that because there's envy for Joshua. Envy for Joshua standing. That, oh, he was beloved. So, you know, you're, you're, Joshua is black like Deontay, so, what, you know, what are you going to do? Let's, let, you know, let's look for the, um, the, the you know, the, 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 the variable. Since there, we already have a constant. Let's look for a variable at the end. Oh, he's white. Oh, let's call him a name. It's jealousy. That is all. You know, everybody wants you to understand that it makes life easier to understand. People are jealous. People, when they're jealous, they're going to say stuff that isn't true. That they don't even, they know it's not, it's not even true. But, you know. Okay, coach. Thank you. You're kicking me out. Bye. All right, sorry, Tony. <laughs> yeah, I gave you three minutes to cook. I gave you three minutes of uninterrupted conversation.
You know what I mean? Y'all got to make your points. That's right. I used to be two minutes, but I raised it up to three minutes. You got three minutes to cook. Get your three minutes of uninterrupted conversation. After that, after that, you go to, you know, after that is, you know, we got to put, you got to put the jeopardy on. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyways, all I'm saying is this here. When it comes to business, dog, you can't do skin color politics. I told you, people who are privileged don't view the world through the eyes of the poor. Carla, hold on. People who are privileged do not view the world through the eyes of the poor. Because they live in a different tax bracket. They live different lifestyle than you. Their reality is different from you. The more money you have, the, the easier your life can be. You have access to a lot more material things. You be, get a lot of privileges because of your money and your status in society. That's what it's all about. It's about your status in society. That's what it's about. It's classism. When you have money, you are in a different class than those who don't have money. Irregardless of whether, irregardless of whether you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't matter. You have the haves and the have-nots. Those who got it, living a whole lot better than those who don't got it. Look at LeBron James. Look at, um, uh, 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 um, what, what's the main man? Look at, um. Uh, a lot of these other guys. Look at um, Shannon Sharp. Look at um, DJ Envy. Uh, those guys on the Breakfast Club. Charlemagne. Those guys look just like you and me and some people in the chat. Guess what? But they they are privileged. They have they they have access to resources and power and pe powerful people that me and you will never get to. Don't look like the system. Stop them. Um, call what's the name? What you call from? Coach, what's up? It's Corey from Texas. How you feeling? Corey from Texas, talk to me. Uh, I'm glad you uh, played those clips earlier where you uh, brought up the stuff that they were saying. I know me and you had a good laugh yesterday <laughs> on Instagram, but it was like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm, glad you, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you brought that up <laughs> because it's like it's showing that you're not just like picking a fight. It's showing you're not just making up lies. Yeah. It shows you're not like try to bully people it shows no this is actually the stupid shit that came out of these people's mouth yeah and i'm going to ask you to be accountable for what you said out your mouth yeah. and just be honest and just say my bad and move on but you know unfortunately they'll never say that so it is what it is yeah i mean yeah the thing th th this is the thing though core like <laughs> um um the thing is is you you went this is the issue you went years pushing this narrative but not only that you digitally attack people online. You scandalize people's names, said all types of stuff because you was trying to push your paradigm, your worldview or your thinking onto others. This is not the Borg. Mm -hmm. We're not a, just a, we, we, you know, we, uh, people, especially the black people and any other uh, group of people on the planet, but we've never been a monolith. All of us don't think alike, right? Everybody's right. circumstances is different. You know, you got to deal, you got to deal with the, you got to deal with the cars that life dealt you. Hell, I got, man, I got a video, of course, I got a video, man, of this brother named Richie Parker from Beaufort, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. He's a black man. I showed this video on this show before. Mm -hmm. He was born with no arms. He drives his car Damn. with his feet. He does everything with Damn. his feet. And his, his head and his, show, and his little shoulder and stuff like that. And he works for NASCAR. He works for NASCAR wow. and he says, look, when people tell me what I can't do, I don't pay attention to people when they tell me what I can't do. He's not. If anybody who should be running around participating in the victim Olympics, it's a black man from Beaufort, South Carolina, who was born with no arms. He is the one who really should right. be doing it. You got these old butter biscuit eating ass laptop revolutionaries who run around telling niggas to drop the hat. <laughs> they got shooters. You better not come to the fight. They complaining all day. Like able bodied men complaining all day. But I got video of this guy who we got. Damn it, uh, he worked for NASCAR. He ain't complaining at all. And he get offended when somebody tell him that he can't do something. Exactly. Yeah, Unbelievable. Shout out to Corey, man, from Texas. Thank you, brother, for calling, man. Salute, fam. Shout out, peace, bro. Yes, sir.
make it make it make sense. You want me to believe this bullshit. Man, look how they did Wilder. How they did him? Made him a multi-millionaire? Put him in a mansion? Fly around the private jets? Um, sleeping with the sleeping, sleeping with the best of the, the, the finest of women on the planet? Plenty of money? Like what like like what 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 got, got statue? What, what what you talking about? How they did him? What what, what they did to him? Um, I mean, I'm just asking, you know. Um call him, what's your name to call him from? Man, you already know. It's inevitable. It's D Block, D Cam, D City, D Ville, Baltimore. Hey! D Block, talk to me, fam. My brother, my brother, my brother. You are totally right. You are totally right. You know, I never played that victim Olympics. I never try to be a victim. They always said if you keep on smoking that red, it's going to mess you up. Coach, I'm good. <laughs> I'm better than good. I'm D Block, <laughs> baby. And I represent D City all day, D Ville all day. Man, I represent everybody from Dallas. And if you don't like it, kiss my ass twice. <laughs> Coach, now we know Wilder's been victimized now. We know that Wilder's being accused of, of going to the other side yeah. and not looking back. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The brother got paid. Are you going to pay him? You ain't going to pay him. You, all you're going to do is just say, wow, he's a star. And never buy his pay view event. That's why his ass left. He wasn't making no money over there at PBC. Mm. Ain't nobody gave a rat about uh, Wilder at the end. They left him alone, coach. They forgot about their king. But let me tell you something, coach. New York City is going down. New York City is going down. Represent what I'm saying. New York City is going down Saturday night. We saw what they did today yeah. on yeah, top so of the tower. Slapping yes. each other. Yeah. No, 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 I didn't see slapping each other. I saw the slap going one way. That's what I saw. I saw someone getting well, slapped well, and I well, saw someone receiving the slap. That's what I saw. <laughs> well, well, coach, <laughs> if you know this, coach, which I, I, I hope you do know, <laughs> when a man growls at you back like a lion, yeah, like Mr. Rod. King Rod did, yeah, I, I heard Rod and he growled. I heard I'm a king. Rah. I'm on my throne. Rah. That tells me he slapped him back. Yeah. Now, it might have not been physical, but it was spiritual. Hey! Coach, it's going to be a beautiful fight. And if ain't nobody bought those damn tickets yet, get your ass on the phone, call Ticketmaster, make it happen. And I'm telling you, <laughs> buy you some uh, buy you some good seats. Because at the end of the day, you're going to see a great fight. Coach, hit the music. Yeah, hey, man, look here, man. Shout out to D Block. He wants his music, man. Let's get let's get D Block his music. Yeah, Bob Singer, look at that. You know, my people, now. I want to tell you something. <laughs> this fight can be for our generation. It's gonna be a great fight. D Block, D Town, D D D Bill, Baltimore, Jazz. Shout out to D Block, man. <laughs> D Block forgot to say. Max. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, I had to, I had to piss off the Ryan, the Ryan Garcia fans a little bit. I saw Devin Haney slap the taste out of King Rye's mouth, slap the taste out of his mouth. King Rye was growling, told some yeah, he was growling. You get what I'm saying? Slap the makeup off his face. So that's what, that's what I saw. I saw makeup flying everywhere. Makeup. <laughs> Hey, now, now I'm instigating. Now I'm instigating. I don't know, man. I saw the makeup flying there. He, he did, did it like he got a slap him. Man, he ain't slap him. He pushed him. He ain't slap him. He just pushed him in the face. Look like a slap to me. Look, that would look like. They look like a slap to me. <laughs> For the piss of people off. Look like a slap to me. That's all I'm saying. You know, you say push, I say slap. Uh, Carla, what's the name? Where you call it from? Joy Graham, Baltimore. How you doing? How you doing? Man, Troy from B-Mall. Now, coach. To. Let me tell you what, <laughs> what we have is a man that's, uh, he doesn't want to box anymore. We don't get into that after, before I make this comment. Mm -hmm. I just want to make this comment first. He saw the writing on the wall that he's not getting any younger and he doesn't have to, doesn't have the brutality or that passion to do this anymore. So he said, I need to go and I need to, I need to go where I could get, I could get maximum pay for who I am and what I do. These fools over here that saying anointed him king and all that have never given him a dime. They've given him time, but they've never given him a dime. So he's going to do what's best for him. And he strikes me as the type of cat now that he's like, I never thought I would be here. I was a champion. 
I got a beautiful wife. Yeah. Kids are okay. I got generational wealth. Why am I listening to these fools over here? Yeah. I'm going to go cash out like everybody else does. I'm just not going to say that. But if you listen to the speech he gave recently, uh, I don't know if it was in the press conference or whatever. He said he don't care if he die in the ring in his next fight. That's a man that's telling you, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. I'm just looking for a way out. That's all. Yeah. yeah he's going to get this way out when he get knocked out. Yeah, um, I was listening to him, and he was so, he was like, you know, this this is gonna be the fight to see. Do I still have it or not? I got a video with um, Malik Scott right here that I'm looking at, and Malik Scott got mm -hmm. a look on his face like, man, this ain't the same Deontay Wilder, man. Um, this this guy is, uh, you know, uh, you know, he it, it just it's just the stuff that he was saying like. The, the, like Malik Scott looked very disheartening, you know, in in this interview. I'm gonna play it. I'm going to play it, let the people hear it, just get mm -hmm. the people to hear it. Shout out to those people over there, the seconds out, because that's what he did the interview with, the seconds out. Yeah, also, Coach, before I bounce off here, when it comes to Malik Scott, the reason why I had that look on his face, you know the paycheck's over. Once this man quit, you know, who, who else going to pick him up as a trainer? I don't know if he trained anybody else, but who else going to pick him up as a trainer? He ain't do nothing, right? Yeah. And now the last thing I want to say is to D-Block. He said that he don't, he don't play the victim Olympics. My man, every day you come on here, it's about tank. And you're wearing some man's draws. I'm pretty sure you're wearing Ryan's draws now because he's fighting old uh, Devin. You're just not saying that. So every day you come on, <laughs> you play the victim Olympics, brother. <laughs> All right, man. I'm All right, gone. Side of Troy. Actually, you know what? You know what? Actually, uh, 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 D Block called and he didn't say nothing about Tank at all. It was shop. Shout out to Iffy. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub. He said Wilder lost the battle but won the war. He's getting millions of dollars with a padded record, and a trainer was a trash boxer. Security bad. I mean, again, I'm, listen, Wilder ain't no sellout to me. I'm telling y'all right now. He's not a sellout. All, all of those who feel Wilder sold out, that, that, to me, that's crazy talk. The man ain't sold out. He bought in. He bought in. Right? He bought in. You know, he, he's already a millionaire. He's already a multi-millionaire. He made means means with Shelly Finkel, and uh, you know what I mean. Means with Shelly Finkel and, and Showtime, and then um, uh, Shelly Finkel, Showtime, Al Heyman, and then over there with uh, with, with Fox. He made means over there, and now he's getting paid some more millions fighting fighting with the Saudis, and now he's fighting. Got this one fighter with Eddie Hearn. So that's just the reality of the situation. He didn't sell out. He bought in. Remember that he bought in. So. Uh, if he say he say Wilder lost the battle, secure the bag. I got you. Um, shout out to Sean from the Heights. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub. You say he want the uh, he want the Cancun. He want the Cajun Sparkle too. I guess. Hey man. Um, shout out to the Martin. He say D Block won't be victimized as long as he ducks Rick. Shout out to uh, Raymond Moore. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub. He say Coach, you got to see the video of Ryan and Dev on the off cuff where Ryan was rapping and Dev was looking at him. Um, like what the hell is wrong with this guy? Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. Someone, somebody sent it to me. Somebody sent it to me yesterday. I saw it. Ryan was rapping and stuff like that. Ryan, Ryan just, Ryan just playing right now. He, he good. Ryan, he just playing right now. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People pimping, pimping, sharp as razor blades. Shout out, shout out, shout out to those people over there at um at Seconds Out. Shout out those people over there at Seconds Out. Um, this is, this is Malik Scott. I don't know if you guys heard this. I don't know if you guys heard this. You get what I'm saying? Um. Did I? No, well, yes. A long day, but it come with the game. And, um, this is what we all signed up for. So I'm just here making my time for you guys and answering the questions that you guys want to know. Well, we, we really appreciate the time. Um, Deontay Wilder, back with a bang. Absolutely incredible to see him revealed today as the free agent signing with Matchroom. Just a, a one fight deal. Is that how it's, this is what? You heard what he said as a free agent signing with Matchroom. One, one fight deal. Let's continue. Okay. Um, I don't know nothing about the business aspect, but I know uh, it's a great event. I'm happy he's on the car and I, this is a great opportunity for him to take advantage of. In terms of where he is in his career, he's talked about it up there as being his final assault. Um, I was saying, where do you see Deontay in his career at the moment? Is this really his final farewell, his final assault at world title glory? Uh. So Wilder said this is his final assault. This is going to be his last fight, basically what he's saying. The Wilder, Wilder, know, Wilder know that, let's be honest, the gig is up. He know the gig is up. 
Tyson Fury exposed him, to be fair. Again, I don't like Tyson Fury, but that is the facts. Tyson Fury exposed him, exposed him as, as the inferior fighter um, that he is from a boxing standpoint. And he hasn't been he hasn't been the same since then. I think that fight took a lot out of him. He took two massive beatings in that fight. Out of the three fights they had, he took two 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 of those fights, two of the three fights was massive beatings. Took a lot out of him. And there's the, the you know, this is why when he fought Joseph Parker, Joseph Parker did not sit there and try to box with Wilder. He immediately went at him. So people know if you go at Wilder, get him on that back foot, he can't he can't get him on that back foot. You get what I'm saying? He can't, you know, he, he can't load up on that shot. So it, it is what it is. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? What up, Cole Jonathan from Brooklyn, man. Man, Brooklyn, stand up, man. Y'all, what's going on, my brother? What's going on, man? This show, man, this topic, man. Yo, I'm just bugging, man, because, like, I'm listening to the calls, I'm in the chat, you know, and I just feel like it's not even that complicated to me. Cole is like, what? What promoter or promotional company could give him an opportunity that even comes close to this? Hearn got all the fight fighters in his stadium. He fucking with the shorty, the so excellency. Like it don't like it's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Fuck the white and the black. Like even if you got a problem with, with the white people or whatever, this deal is so far beyond what anyone else could offer. I don't see what could come close. Easy decision. He lucky that Hurd ain't leveraged his um, position because he could have gave him a, a, you know, not as good as a deal and he would have had it set because I really don't see anything else on the table. I just wanted to add also that I could see Wilder beating Zane because Zane's going to be on the line for that right hand and, you know, if that shit land, man, I don't, I didn't see too many people come back from that, man. Yeah. So, it could, it could be a building might fall, man. You know what I'm saying? When they say fucking Godzilla, whatever the fuck, <laughs> he, he might fall, man. I can see that happening, man. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. Wilder got hard. Hey, yo, he's not skilled, but you got to admit, man, he take an ass with him, man. Like, 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 my brother had to come in and stop that fight with, um, with, with, um, uh, Fury. Yeah, Because he was willing to take the, the ass with him. Yeah, the, and the second, so, like, he going to stand in there. Yeah. And if that right hand dropped the right way, he turned that shit over, he get, he get his leverage on it. It's the night's over, man. Like him or not. You know what I'm saying? I think. And you like know what? one corner said. I think. That, I think. I think. No. I think. I think that's the only way you can promote that. You got to say, "Hey, um, uh, look, boy, if he land that right hand, boy, you know that right. You know that like like that's the like like when you talk about Wilder, um, Yarmis, anybody I speak to who talk about Wilder, they don't talk about footwork, uh, ring IQ, defense, hand eye coordination. You know um, how he slips shots, stuff like that. They just talk about if he land that right hand. So. That's at this point. That's how you gotta promote it. You know, if he lands that right hand, he can. You know, I mean, that's the only way you can promote his fights. Yo, Cole, you know what's crazy? You're absolutely right, hundred percent right. But the fact of the matter is, the nigga was what forty nine and zero, I believe, right, or something mm -hmm. like that. Forty seven and zero. You know, he maintained the title for years. And yo, and like, you gotta have to, you gotta give Mark Beeler credit because he worked with what he had. And they had a tremendous amount of success, man. And the bottom line is, say what you want. But before the Fury fight, he knocked out every man that ever stepped in the ring with him, man. Mm. And I'm not no wild fan. I don't like him. I don't like him off, out of the ring, in the ring. But sometimes, you know, you work with what you have and it works, man. Yeah. Lesson. Yo, listen, man. I talk to you this weekend. Peace and love, fam. All right, man. Salute, fam. Shout out to Yamas, man. Brooklyn, stand up. Where Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? Yeah, man. Again, look, listen. I ain't, I ain't tripping, man. Look, man. Go get your, man. Go get your paper, man. I, I've been saying this. If, if you listen, if you listen to any show I had, I've been saying this. I'm like, man, go get your money, man. Let me sit there listening to these, let me listen to these goddamn two figure niggas on YouTube. I'ma listen. Listen, you were eight figure, you were eight figure, you were eight figure jigger, and you listening to two figure jiggers on, on, on YouTube. Yeah, we got your back, King. We gonna ride. We gonna do this. Yeah, we fight these wars. You know, like <laughs> I remember uh I got the video where uh it was Jabba the Hutt, Malik Scott, Deontay Wilder, and BF. All of them was on all of them was on, on a live 
on uh, Jabba the Hutt's channel. I got it saved in one of my in one of my um, folders on, on YouTube, right? And um, you know, uh, he was like, "Yes, King." Uh, BF was like, uh, um, um, "Thank BF uh, uh, um, seven eight. Thank you so much." Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm, I'm talking to the king right now. You know, champ, champ, uh, you know, Wilder, champ, you know, I just, I just, you know, you know, people say that, um, champ, you know, you, you, you are the only one that I know that's standing on the front lines for black people, champ. You know, like, you know, the way you take these shots for us, champ, and, you know, just the things that you do and, and, you know, and how you, how you represent us, champ, and you're fighting these battles for us and, you know, and no one respects what you're doing for us. And I'm like, what the fuck is this nigga talking about? He act like he talking to Malcolm X, Malik El Shabazz, or Marcus Garvey, or, 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 or Hewitt P. Newton, or H. Rap Brown. Like, what is this fool talking about? Yes, you know, and, and, and people say that, you know, that, 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 that you can't be compared to, you know, um, Muhammad Ali and, and, and Floyd Mayweather when, when in actuality, the only two people that you can compare the champ to is Muhammad Ali and Floyd Mayweather because he's, he, he's the total opposite of what Floyd is and he's all of, he needs everything of what Ali is, you know, and then you got people like Malik Scott. Yeah, man, you know, yeah, man, cause, you know, what, Deontay, Deontay, he fought 10 times more battles than Muhammad Ali inside the ring, and he fought 10 times more battles than Ali outside the ring. Like, bro, so when you got people saying all of this, I'm like, damn, what the, hold on, man, y'all, y'all making it do, y'all making it do, what, like, Wilder's just a, a, a good fighter, you know, he's just a fighter, um, who, who, you know, you get what I'm saying? And, uh, um, and, um, you know, he's just a fighter, man, like, y'all, 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 um, what the hell y'all talking about? Like, they was projecting what they view Wilder as on Wilder. You know, and he say, salute, soldier. Soldier, salute. This is what Wilder said. Like, I played the video. I played the video on this show before. So y'all know I ain't lying. He say, salute, soldier. He said, I salute you, soldier. You know, you chose the right side in this war. You know, it's definitely a war. It's us against them. You know, and you chose the right side. I'm like, what the fuck is these niggas talking about? They talking about wars and kings and, you know, you standing on the front lines of black people. What the hell is these niggas, these niggas talking about? Come on, man. True, true, true. Anyways, here go Malik Scott. I would say, like, this is definitely a second half career, career feeling of do or die. Shit to get off the pot. Um, and how he could just conquer all of that is just being himself. Um, no distractions, being violent, pulling the trigger, um, taking risks, you know, just being the man that got him to this point right here. He does that, then Jeng is knocked out cold. I think we're seeing a... See, they're selling hope right now. Right now, they're selling hope. Now, you can sell hope. Do you guys know? Do you guys know what... I <laughs> Listen, we're selling hope right now. I'm in the hope business. I'm like Don King say, I'm selling hope, baby. As long as the little man, as long as you make the little man feel like that he got a chance, as long as you make the little man feel like that you even, you even in the playing fields for him and he got a chance to win, then you can always count on him to, um, to donate to the cause. See, you got to sell people hope. Yeah, man, all he got to do, man, if he, if he get back the way he used to be, then I see Zane getting knocked out. And then, so now what happens is, yeah, man, like, like my brother Yaman say, coach, I'm telling you, coach, I can see, I shout out to Yaman, I can see Wilder boy winning that fight. He laying that right hand. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, man, you know, but, but you know what, but Yaman's right, though. That's how you sell the fight, though. You, at this point, you have to sell it. You, at, at this point, you have to sell it that way. You know, this is the fight where the bronze bomber will be back. He's going to lay in that right hand. He's going to lay in that right hand on the man from China. He's going to lay in that right hand on the China man. You get what I'm saying? And, and he's going to, you know, you know the, the, uh, the thunder from down under. You know what I mean? The lightning that's exciting. You know what I mean? The hammer from Alabama. Sprinkle with a little bit of country country grammar. You get what I'm saying? You know, the bomb squad nation to this day is back. And you know, you know, we, we have we have we have we have the we have the uh, uh, the American, the American black man against the Asian China man. And what we gonna do, you know, when the beast from the east meets in shango shape. You know what I mean? 
And all I got to, all I need to do is land that right here one time. I land that right here one time, it's over. To this day. You get what I'm saying? Like, li listen, you got to, you got to sell it. You got to try to sell it and try to convince the public that that wild is back. You look, look here, man. Look here, um, uh, Carla, hold on. Th this wilder right here, when y'all saw me fighting Joseph Parker and I was doing this, like I was doing the Harlem Shake and I was doing the Donkey Kong, I was doing the Donkey Kong and I was doing the Hammer Punch, that, that, you know, that, that wilder over with. I'm back, baby. You know, no more windmill punches. No more Hammer Punches. No more Donkey Kong. No more side punches. None of that. I'm back, baby. True, true. True. Yeah, see, you gotta you gotta try to convince people of that. See, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Like y'all got to sell me on that. I say, man, Zay ain't finna knock this dude out, man. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm glad Wilder getting his paper, but based on the last fight, I'm like, nah, dog. I don't I ain't I don't like what I'm seeing, dog. See, I'm a realist, dog. I'm like, man, look here, man. Man was shaking like booty meat last fight. I don't I don't know. I don't know about this one, man. Um, Carla, what's your name in the corner from? Jesse from Minneapolis, coach. Uh, First off, what I want to say is, man, I want to say, uh, big props to you, coach, and, and your boxing show. It gets me through my long drafts. So I li I drive for living. But yeah, I was calling in for uh for the wireless topic, and um I was watching the press conference with Deontay Wilder, and um he seems unsure of himself. Yeah. Like it's like he's trying to project or build confidence that he still got that hunger, but it looks like there's something missing. I'm 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 hoping he, I'm wrong, but hopefully we'll see a great fight because Zang is a dangerous, dangerous softball for any heavyweight. That's my call, Coach. All right, salute, fam. Minneapolis, stand up. Yeah, man. Like um, I don't, I don't, I don't, listen. I don't like, I don't like, um, uh, I don't like Malik Scott's energy in his interview. A slightly different attitude, certainly in the press conferences from Deontay. He seems a calm, measured, controlled individual up there. Are you seeing a slight mindset change from him at all? Um, I don't, it's tough, man, because it's like, um, how can I put it? Um, I just think as we get older, we mature. As we mature, our perspectives change. No, I agree with that. Listen, I met Malik Scott. I spoke to the brother. Malik Scott is a real, he's a philosophical type brother. Um, he's a philosophical type brother. I met him. He's a, a nice guy, very nice guy, uh, very philosophical. He does know the sport. He does know the sport of boxing. You know, he, he knows how to talk to you and teach. Um, he hasn't made Deontay Wilder better. Wilder has not gotten better under his tutelage. Those are the facts. You know what I mean? True, true, true. But however, I think that, the wilder that he has is different. Um, once he got rid of Mark Breland, that he has he, wilder hasn't been the same since Mark Breland. Very similar to how Mike Tyson wasn't the same when he got rid of Kevin Rooney. Um, he's not the same guy anymore. And again, much as I don't like Tyson Fury, but Tyson Fury did that to him. Tyson Fury did that to him. You get what I'm saying? Um, shout out to Raymond Moore. Hey. Okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub. He said that nigga Dev uh, face had me rolling when Ryan started rapping. And he was looking like, uh, like, man, why am I fighting this dude? Yeah. Uh, shout out to Shad be, be being a member for 13 months. Salute to you, fam. And shout out to um, Shad again. Hey, okay. Dropping that half for Pay him double, your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Jack received. Playtime's over, boy. boy. He said, our brother Wilder sold out for a pork chop sandwich. He said, with some, he said, with some whole head cheese with pork grinds and two little grapes and two little ground grape um, fago. On the side, Dr. Umar would be disappointed. I mean, yeah, man, the man, listen, man, I ain't, listen, I, 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 as I said, I'm not looking at Wilder to sell out. Wilder didn't sell out to me, bro. Wilder bought in. Wilder bought in. He, I mean, he said enough is enough. I've I, I been pandering to these, I've been pandering to these, bro. Like, like, how do you explain this, Wilder? We must internalize the flatulation of the matter by transmitting the effervescence of the Indonesian proximity in order to further segregate, to preclude on the issue of world domination would only circumvent, <coughs> excuse me, circumcise the revelation that it reflects the aphrodisiac symptoms which now perpetrates the Jericho's activation. Yeah, man, so, so I think, again, I think, and all this is all jokes aside. 
I think the, Tyson Fury, like what Tyson Fury psychologically did something to Wilder. Like I, he broke him. I think Tyson Fury, um, um, he broke Deontay Wilder. Some I heard one guy say he buck broke him. I heard somebody say that Tyson Fury buck broke Deontay Wilder. Very same thing they said about Terrence Crawford. Those guys on that side of the fence. You know, he's he's been broken. He's a broken man. Uh, you know, from a boxing stand. Not not hold on, Carla, hold on. Not from a not from a financial standpoint. Financially he's not broken. But I'm saying from a boxing standpoint, it's like man, Tyson Fury man did a number on that boy, man. And he's he hasn't recovered from that. And that's why he's gun shy. That's why he's eyes that's why you see him bucking his eyeballs wide open. You see him bucking his eyeballs wide open? Go back and look at the Robert Hellenius fight. He was bucking his eyeballs open like this here when the Robert Hellenius fight. And then he hit him. He hit him with a he hit him with his he hit him with the palm of his hand. Robert Hellenius came in swinging, swinging out wide right hand, and Wilder was like, eh. He hit him. No, it was a wide left hand. It was a wide, was a right right hand? I, yeah, I think it was a wide right hand. He was throwing the wild right hand, but he left his face chin up in the air like that. Like, hit me, Wilder. And Wilder had his eyes. Go back and look at that knockout. Wilder had his eyes bucked wide open, like, you know, like buckwheat. And um, and he got, and he, he got, and he hit that guy. Go back and look at that fight. Y'all see what I'm talking about. I say, man, this ain't the same dude. Um, Carla, what's your name? you calling from? Oh, his phone on is Ross from New York. Rob from New York. Talk to me, fam. Thanks, Coach. I can't believe it's 2024 and people have managed to monetize victimhood and race baiting and all this shit. Like, it's just wild to me. And the funny thing is that it's all done through sports. Like, I know that you said that you were about to start the, the podcast, uh, the, the YouTube channel. It's a lot of rumbling in the background, bro. I can't, I can barely hear what you're saying. Give me a second, coach. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you a lot better. Well, no, uh, uh, no, I was just saying that uh, I know that you mentioned that you was about to make your podcast or a YouTube channel on something else prior to the uh, Fury Wilder fight. And you just saw a lot of the people kind of like uh, frustrated and just having a meltdown. But it's just crazy that people are, are monetizing this shit. Like, this is wild. But, uh, man, at the end of the day, money talks, man. Like, people got to make decisions on however it benefits their family and friends at the end of the day. But uh, on another note, uh, I, I gotta. I have to see Ryan's uh, uh, things yet left last night, bro. I gotta teach my prayers, man. <laughs> uh, that's my call, coach. All right, salute, fam. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, he's not. He's not the same guy. And 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 you get. You guys gotta understand, man. Um, Wilder took a beating in those fights against against Tyson Fury. But not only that, the the, the psychology of what he had to go through. Now, I'm not a doctor, but you've been pandering to see, do these guys online and you're trying to live up to their imagination of you, so to speak. You're trying to live up to their image of you, the way they perceive you and the way they perceive you and the, in reality are two different things. Right. Um, Wilder is, is a guy who made a lot of money in boxing. He did well. He's able to take care of his kids. He has a beautiful story. He has a beautiful story, man. Like, all jokes aside, Deontay Wilder has a beautiful story where he came from. But he got radicalized by these fools from, from the Butter Biscuit boxing community. The Butter Biscuit boxing community, he got radicalized by them, right? And he was trying to pander to the Butter Biscuit boxing community. And he was pushing, trying to push a narrative that was the furthest thing from the truth. Right? You're pushing the white man, the devil, Eddie Hearns, the devil in one breath. But everybody is ignoring Danalo and Crowley. You know, the gay white guys.
from the LGBT community who create your king's costumes. They look, they, oh, they overlook that. I didn't overlook it. I was the one telling everybody what, what the deal was. They overlooked JD's being white, the manager slash trainer. They overlooked Shelly Finkel being white, right? And again, so you can't be pushing uh, Wakanda forever in one breath while ignoring the fact that Jack Kirby and Stan Lee created your reality. So I give all of these different analogies on my shows because I'm trying to paint a picture to get you to understand that it's some bullshit. I'm trying to get you to understand, look, these dudes are selling y'all, these dudes are selling y'all um, ice cream and telling you it's fire water. I told y'all, I said, that man don't believe that shit. He don't believe that. At the end of the day, the Butter Biscuit Boston community, they didn't build no, they didn't build no statue for him. It was the white man that did that. His followers from the Butter Biscuit Boston community, they didn't, they didn't um, put millions of dollars in Deontay Wilder's pocket. Shelly Finkel and JD's did that. You know, they, they negotiated those deals. Shelly Finkel. Showtime. Fox. White, 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 white. So all I did was pull the wool from it. Like, dude, these niggas is lying to y'all. Don't believe this. I got attacked for telling y'all the truth. I was the bad guy for telling the truth. But guess what? I kept my story the same. I stood 10 toes down. And when it came back around, what did you see? The same guy that said Eddie Hearn from, uh, was a slave master. And, you know, and all that there, that same guy, he's over there. This is what he's doing. This is what he's doing. You see that? Look real happy, huh? In 2024, now, Jabba the Hutt say Eddie Hearn is the devil. What makes him the devil? Like, I'm just asking a question. Whether you believe he's a devil or not, that's on you. But my question is, what makes him a devil? Look like he putting millions of dollars in people's pockets. That Anthony Joshua rich. Canelo made a boatload of money working with him. Uh, Raymond Ford getting some money now. Uh, Deontay Wilder looked real happy to me. Cheesing from ear to ear. Uh, Daniel Jacobs made a whole lot of money with him. Uh, Boo Boo Andrade made a whole lot of money with him. I'm like, so I'm trying to figure out what, what, made, what made him. I'm just, I'm just asking a question. Because if you believe that, please tell me why. Like, what makes him the devil? Just saying, like, because you judge a person by their works. See, a person's works tell you who they are. If I if I steal cars for a living, my works show you what? I am a car thief. If someone breaks in houses for a living, their works show you what? They are a burglar. A burglar, right? If someone um uh if someone uh, is at a church and they preach to people for a living, selling them hope, then his works show you that he is a man of God or he is a preacher. If someone sells a lot of cars for a living, his works show you that he's a car salesman. So if you're saying that the man is a devil, what works can you give me an example of that exemplify the title that you or applying to Eddie Hearn? That's, that's a valid question. That's a valid question. Like when you say someone is honorable, what works can you show me that, that defines how honorable this person is? Because that's how you judge people. You judge people by who they are, by what they do. What they do tells you the story. 
And if he's putting, and if any promoter, I don't care who it is, if they're putting millions of dollars in, the, in another person's pocket, like, I, I remember Don King, I remember Don King said, uh, Don King say, yeah, they want to call me a devil and all that stuff there. I don't, you know, calling me a crook. He say, all I'm doing, he say, that's more propaganda from the white power structure who's trying to tear a black man down. Now, you know, all I'm doing is putting money in my fighter's pockets. Look at Mike Tyson. I, listen, I, I'm putting $30 million in his pocket every time he step in the ring. Now, if he blow his money, that ain't got nothing to do with me. You can't get mad at me. I can't tell another man how to spend their money. <laughs> That's what Don King say. I'm putting, I'm putting millions of dollars. I'm putting millions of dollars in the, in the man's pocket. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People prepping pimping, sharp as razor blades. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, that like, like, like that. <laughs> that's how, that's how you judge people because you got good people and bad people all over the world. They come in many different races, colors, creeds, nationalities, right? Um, I'm going to go deep a little bit. No Diddy, but this going to be real quick. This Stephen X, you've been in the nation of Islam. I don't know if you're still in the nation of Islam, but there's a teaching that goes like this. It talks about the story of Yakub. Yakub was a black man, a black scientist. He was on the island of Patmos. I think it's Patmos in the Bible or Pelon in the Bible. One of the two, right? He's on the island of Patmos and Yakub convinced so many hundreds of uh, black people to go along with him. He wanted to create a new people on the island. This island is supposed to be somewhere by Japan or somewhere of the sort, right? This is the story. It's pseudo, it's pseudo as hell, but I used to believe it. It's pseudo as hell. So, so, um, so, um, um, apparently a black man came up with an idea to create a race of people and it took him 600 years to do it. Now this black man died. He didn't get an opportunity to see his idea come into reality, but he, he had a process to where children were born. They'll take the, they'll take the dark skin and marry the dark skin on with the lighter skin black person. And then they will have children and you just keep intermixing races like that, intermixing, intermixing the light skin with the dark skin until you get a light skin babies. And then you had a light skin, make the light skin. So after 200 years, allegedly came the, the brown man, which was the Japanese man. Been in the NOI, you know what I'm talking about. And then 200 years after that came the yellow man, which was the Chinese man. And then 200 years after that came the white man. So, the teaching goes like this for all of those who don't know. There was an evil black man. That's the key to the whole thing. An evil black man that came up with an evil idea to kill. And then babies who was born dark skinned, they would murk them. They would murk them. Talk to anyone in the nation of Islam that know about the story of Yaqub. I have the book right here. They would murk them. Right? Until they he get the desired effect over time. So when I hear these guys say, well, oh, man, you know they the devil. I'm like, yeah, but the black man, according to the teachings, is the one who came up the wicked idea to create these people who you say that are the devil. So if it wasn't for the evil that this black guy, see, that's, that's the part that everybody missed. I didn't miss it. I'm like, God damn, for real? So I say I like to say this. You judge people by their character. That's it. You judge people by their works. Don't be believing these, this pseudo shit these niggas be talking online. This shit gonna keep you broke. This shit gonna keep you disgusted. You ain't gonna have no money. Your ass gonna be looking crazy. You're not gonna have no resources. You're gonna be bitter, angry, and mad at everybody else who's successful. I followed that shit for 25 years of my life. Wasted 25 years of my life. It was a waste. So I'm telling you, stay away from these race baiting Wakanda niggas from the butter biscuit boxing community. Because you're just going to be mad and upset. Deontay Wilder is a multimillionaire. He did not sell out. I mean, in this show like this, Deontay Wilder did not sell out. He's a multimillionaire. He did the right thing. He bought in. 
the butter biscuit Boston community are going to stay upset. Because they are failures in their own lives. They are not accomplishing anything. And they participate in the Victim Olympics. And the guys who are selling you this foolishness, they are selling it to you because they know that you are a willing participant. You are buying it. I can only sell you something that you're willing to buy. And if you buy that bullshit, that person who's selling it to you is going to profit off of you buying the pseudoism that he sold you. See, that's why they don't like me. But they ain't never seen nothing like me on YouTube. Not, not, not in the YTBC. Not like me. I, listen, I'm with what, uh, listen, with me, I, ain't, I, I stand on what I say. Phone lines is open. These dudes can call anytime time they want to call. They don't call. Because I have a master's degree in common sense. The shit don't add up. When I, you, you, when I break that shit down like that, it show you how stupid and dumb that logic is. You see how dumb that logic is? It show you, man, this shit is stupid. This shit is stupid. Man, you better get you some goddamn money. Floyd Mayweather brag about how much money he got. LeBron brag about how much money he got. Uh, Gilly the Kid and Wallow, they brag about how much money they got. Shannon Sharp, and, uh, Stephen A. Smith, and all these other guys who are celebrities and non-celebrities who I know, the guys who I do know who got money. Guess what? Ain't nothing to nobody holding them back. The nigga who called you a coon, nine times out of ten, he broke and upset. He ain't got no money. That nigga broke and ain't got nothing. He angry and he bitter. She angry and she bitter. Yeah, nigga, we, we fighting a war. What war? Only war I'm fighting, I'm trying to find out how to get some more money in my goddamn pocket. I'm fighting the war of poverty. I'm trying to get lint out of my pocket and put some Federal Reserve notes in there. Because anywhere you go in the world, you're going to have to deal with money. You're going to have to deal with some form of currency, some form of a, a, medium, a, a medium of exchange. Whether you're in China, the continent of Africa, Europe, the, the, uh, the islands, Japan, Asia, North America, South America, no matter where you're at, you're going you're gonna need, to you're gonna need, need some paper. You're going to need some coins. You're going to need some digital currency, no matter where you're at. This is why when Dr. Umar gives his sermon, what do we say? Hit the cash app, international Africans. Hit the PayPal. Because guess what? At the end of the day, that's what it is. That's what it boils down to. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal, international Africans. See, that's, that's what it goes back to. Hit the cash app, hit the PayPal. Power to the people, revolution, no snow bunnies never, but hey, make sure, y'all y'all make sure now, y'all make sure y'all send them donations in now. They're, they're all, there's always going to be willing participants to propaganda. Wilder, you bought into the foolishness. You tried to be a leader to the butter biscuit boxing community. Let's write that down. Let's write that down. Y'all heard this phrase here on this show. If you hear anybody saying this term, you know it came from Coach Malachi. The butter biscuit boxing community. The butter biscuit boxing community is the LDBC. And their um, people who think like them, the fag nons, the she goes, they are part of the butter biscuit boxing community too. The butter biscuit boxing community is going to keep your ass broke, busted, and disgusted. The leader got pork chop juice running all down four of his necks, got three, four stomachs. One of his stomachs is hurting because Wilder, his king, had to go sign with the devil at her. That's just one of his stomachs. Not stomach, stomachs. And you eating that Popeye's chicken with that butter biscuit and you got the grease running down your neck 
and it hit one chin, then it hit the other chin, then it hit the other chin, then it hit the other chin before it get to your neck. So now you got grease in the cracks of all four of your necks, all four of your chins rather. So you got to wipe up under one roll, then wipe up under the other roll, then wipe up under the other roll. You got crumbs all in your, all in your doggone goatee, crumbs in there. You got crumbs all in your, all in your chins. And you leading a revolution full of fools talking about what they going to do when they see a nigga. Boy, hush. True, true, true. Niggas is a joke. Uh, shout out to D-Star dropping that $2 dollar super chat. Salute to you, fam. Uh, shout out to Rick Star hey, okay. dropping that seven dollar super chat. He said, Coach, he said, Coach, you no longer can use BBBC. He said, Butter Biscuit Boston Community. I have contacted my lawyer and license it. Is the name. <laughs> shout out to D-Star Boston. Hey, okay. <laughs> dropping that quarter of a dub on your boy. He said, Who did it better? Wilder to Match Room or Brett Favre to the Vikings? Um, Brett Favre to the Vikings. Brett Favre took the Vikings. Brett Favre took the Vikings to the NFC Championship game. I say Brett. I say I say Brett Favre. D style. I say Brett Favre. Brett Favre to the Vikings. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People pimping, pimping, sharp as razor blades. Uh, shout out to Sequoia. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a bam dub on your boy. Hey, okay. Hey, Leroy. Super Jack. Received. Playtime's over, boy. Boy. He said, Coach, you tell it too much. He said, These are secrets. Nations of gods and earth. Yeah, no, nah, man, they don't got their. <laughs> he said, Them secrets. They don't got their secrets. Hey, listen, check this out. Check this out. Yeah, you, yeah, you know when I woke up, Sequoia, I said, You know what? What do, I, what, do, what do I need in society? I need to have money and good credit. Money and good credit is what you're going to need in society. And you're going to need. A high income skill set. A learn a high income skill. So a high income skill is something that's going to pay you six figures or more. So I went to ask myself, can I take this knowledge that I learned, this pseudo knowledge that I learned? Yeah, man, the earth is 196 million thousand miles um, square miles. The planet is 196 million thousand square miles. You know, 196 million, 940 thousand square miles of the planet Earth belongs to the original man, the Asiatic black man. Nigga, we ain't even from Asia, but that's neither here nor there. You know what I mean? Um, the sun is what, 93 million, the Earth is 93 million miles away from the sun, brother. Light travels at 1,037 and a third, no, he said the, the Earth travels at 1,037 and a third miles per hour, brother. The Earth is spinning, brother. You know what I mean? I forgot, what was, what was the diameter of the Earth? 24,496,000 um, miles in diameter. So I went to ask myself, I used to be impressed with all that shit, right? All that pseudo shit. Then I would ask myself, how can I pay my rent with this, with this shit? I can't. Brother, do you see how much knowledge and wisdom that you have? Man, how can this shit help me get good credit? And how can this shit help me get some money in my pocket? It can't. Yeah, brother, the mothership is going to come back and destroy these devils, brother. Man, how was that? How was that? You telling me that going to help me pay my rent? It can't. How was it going to help me get my kids through college? It can't. Do, do you see the, the shit get the shit get real? It get real right there when you go to asking yourself these questions. When you get out of when you get out of the land of Wakanda, meaning make believe. Wakanda is make-believe. Y'all know that, right? It's not real. When you get out of the land of Wakanda, the pseudo stuff, meaning make-believe, it gets real. It gets real to you. How is this going to help me protect my children and my community and my neighborhood? It can't. How is this going to help me put food on the table? It won't. Y'all nigga, we finna go to war. We're going to lose that war in five minutes. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? You don't own no land. You ain't got no resources. You don't grow your own food. Everything that you have is dependent upon what's a, a, service that, a service that someone else is providing for you. So, nigga, what the hell are you talking about? Let's give everybody a round of applause. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, he ain't. Wilder sold out. Wilder didn't sell out. Wilder bought in. And if you niggas smart, you better buy in too. He looks happy. Showing all 32 teefies. Him and Eddie Hearn. Showing all 32 teefies. They shaking hands. He got a nice watch on. He flew to the UK in a private jet. He flew to the UK in a private jet. He wasn't, listen, he wasn't riding. He, he flew to the UK in a private jet. He wasn't riding in a bro ham. Now I am the number one contender. I'm tired of James the Poodle, Grim Reaper, whatever he want to call himself, ducking me. All right, I'm tired of man driving around town in eight Rolls Royces. He ain't fought nobody. I'm still in a bro ham. The man ride around town in eight Rolls Royces. You're king. Riding around town in eight Rolls Royces. He got plenty of money. As I said before, your woman ain't going to never respect you when you sitting here, when you sitting there crying about, man, the, the, the man holding me down. Yeah, how he holding, how he holding you down? Let me, let me show you, let me show you all this here. Because I don't want nobody thinking I'm capping. I don't want nobody thinking I'm capping. I'm going to show you all this right here. I'm going to show y'all this right here. Hold on. I got to show y'all this. <laughs> I got to show y'all this. Joe, and I have a game plan for life. I work at Hendrick Motorsports as a vehicle engineer, and we're... <laughs> Where my phone at? Might as, I, might, I might as well do this. Let's go. I'm Richie Parker. I'm just an average Joe, and I have a game plan for life. I work at Hendrick Motorsports as a vehicle engineer, and we're one of the most successful teams in NASCAR. I've been a part of all of the Jimmy Johnson's championships, so I'm just, I'm a very small piece of the pie. And I just got my start. Right out of college, I went to school at Clemson, and as an engineer at Clemson, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do after. Now, this is Richie Parker from Beaufort, South Carolina. Black man, born in America, working for NASCAR, and he was born with no arms. So I, we ain't got to worry about him t typing, talking about drop the Addy. And this guy has a damn good credit score. And he is financially well off. So don't come over here with that Zamunda shit. Don't bring that Wakanda shit over here to me. I ain't trying to hear that. Let's give everybody a round of applause. I just, you know, I just, I just, I just, you know, I just, I just, I just want to throw that out there. I just want to throw that out there. Look him up, Richie Parker. And he, he owns a 6'4 Chevrolet Impala and he drives his own car to and from work. But you selling me victimology. The man holding you down. And if I don't subscribe to that, I'm a coon or Uncle Tom in the sellout. And you going to pull up on me and you got shooters. But you walk by them white folks every day who you say that's your enemy and you ain't pulled up on them. You ain't told them to drop no Addy. You ain't told them you got shooters. You ain't done nothing to nobody white. But you want to talk that shit to me every goddamn day. This is why I call you niggas the Butter Biscuit Boxing Community. Anyways, let's give um, everyone who the sponsors of the show. We got people, our sponsor of the show, Keith, Bull, Keith Bulldogs. Keith Bulldogs. You get what I'm saying? See, 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 somebody, somebody got to tell y'all the truth. You ain't going to get this from no other YouTube channel. Somebody got to tell y'all the truth. I'm going to tell it like it is, and I'm willing to take whatever come with it. Because I believe when you, when, you, when you stand on your square, you stand on truth, that, that's what it's going to be. 
I ain't trying to be down with nobody. I'm trying to be down. I'm trying to be down with the truth. That's where I'm at with it. All that sucker shit, you can say that shit for the birds, homie. Anyways, um, shout out to Sequoia. Oh, everybody who gave me super chat. Shout out to Sequoia. Hey, okay. D style. Hey, okay. Rick Star. Hey, okay. Shout out to Shad 1419. Hey, okay. Raymond Moore. Hey, okay. The Martin. Hey, okay. Sean from the Heights. Hey, okay. Shout out to Ify Ify SD. Hey, okay. Shout out to um the Undisputed Talk. Hey, okay. Martin King Boxing. Hey, okay. Shout out to Real Dude Uprising. Hey. Jit Stanfield. Hey, okay. James Bash. Hey, okay. Jasper Driver. Hey, okay. Henry Brown. Hey, okay. Mr. Gumbo. Hey, okay. Jamario Dixon. Hey, okay. And shout out to our sponsor, Keith Bulldogs. Hey, okay. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> this show has been sponsored today by Keith Bulldogs. Shout out to my brother. And um, shout out to Derek Choice. Hey, okay. For dropping that. Bam, dub on your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Jack received. Playtime's over, boy. boy. Shout out to Keith Bulldog. I mean, shout out to Derek Choice. He say something for the collection plate. I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that. See, this is the reality of the situation. You're talking that revolution shit, but you're on YouTube. YouTube is the white man's platform. And anytime someone donates or anything, YouTube going to get 30%. So, you know, I'm just telling you what it is. See, I, I live in the world of reality. I don't live in the world of pseudoism. I live in the world of reality. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear to make, your, to make you feel good. I'm not here to codify your feelings. I'm here to give you the unadulterated truth. It's up to you to accept it or reject it. Call me whatever name you want to call me. You know what you're not going to call me? You're not going to say I'm a liar. True, true, true. You ain't going to say I'm a liar. You may say I'm a cool sellout. You may say this and that. Yeah, nigga, when I see you, I'm going to knock your little ass out. I'm going to do this and that. You can say whatever you want to say. But guess what? You're not going to say I'm a liar. Let's think out here. Well, you know, I guess I got to be like everybody else and think Al Heyman. <laughs> I can quit my job now, baby. Six figures, baby. You feel me? But, but a name, a name. Do you have a name? Oh, nah, nah. I ain't got no name, you know? Name them names, man. <laughs> they know who they is. Name them names. <laughs> Please, the <laughs> names need to be named. They know who they is. <laughs> the Mexican monster. Hey, man. Shout out, man. Shout out to School of x Man. School of x Man is in the building. Shout out, oh, you know, you know we got to give a shout out to the Tenderonas, the PYTs, and the Honey Dips. We got to give a shout out to the Tenderonas. The truth about her own she's a sweet little girl. Yeah, somebody, they, they, you know, they, they tell me I sound like 1988 Bobby Brown. That's what they told me. You know what I mean? They, they, they told me, they told me I sound like a 1988 Bobby Brown mixed with a little bit of baby face. True, <laughs> true, true. <laughs> hey, shout out to Mimi 24. Hey, okay. Shout out to Sheila and Kelly. Hey, okay. The Duchess of Wisdom. Hey, okay. Shout out to Goddess. Hey, okay. Lisa Bell, Salute Sis. Hey, okay. Shout out to the, uh, Miss Connie. Hey, okay. Jackie Hernandez. Hey, okay. Sabrina Lee. Hey, okay. Passion for Beauty. Hey, okay. Shout out to the Food Revolution. Hey, Okay. Bless 365. Hey, okay. Shout out to Tila. Hey, okay. Shout out to Miss Parker. Hey, okay. Uh, uh, shout out to uh, Nick Rich. Hey, okay. Feel on the tube. Hey, okay. Amina. Hey, okay. Green Eyes P. Hey, okay. Shout out to Bree. Hey, okay. Ebony 76. Hey, okay. Miss Felicia Williams. Hey, okay. La Jessica. Hey, okay. Karma Serene. Hey, okay. Kiara. Hey, okay. Summer in November. Hey. Okay. Shout out to Elena. Hey. Okay. And shout out to Nay. Shout out to Nay. Nay with A. 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 Shout out to Nay, man. And every time I think of Nay, I think about a letter to ATL. Nay. A. Shout out to Nay, man. Shout out to Nay. And shout out to the boys over there, man. And um, the ninety, the ninety five South Show, man. Um, um, um I, I love them dudes over there, man. This show is very, very funny. Shout out to the boys. Hey. Okay. Let's give all the tenderonies, the PYTs, and the honey dips, and the vintage tenderonies. Can't forget about the vintage and round of applause. And uh, hold on, who else I said on here? Um, so hold on, do I have? Yeah, oh yeah, shout out to Moezy, man. I forgot Moezy. Shout out to Moezy as well. Let's give all the tender runners a round of applause. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, yeah, man, the butter biscuit, the butter biscuit boxing community. <laughs> hey, well, I'm trying to tell you, boy. They round here threatening somebody somewhere. They mad at somebody. Shout out to SP Got Beats. Hey, okay. SP Got Beats. Shout out to uh, the other channel. SP Got Beats. Uh, shout out to uh, Malaza Con Sabor. Shout out to uh, Cobain. Uh, just everybody on the other channel as well. It is what it is. Um, if you sitting here watching the show, hate watching, y'all didn't want to hit the like button. Riley, get them. Look, fuck you. Fuck the plane you flew in on. Fuck them shoes. Fuck the socks with the bell on it. Fuck them cheap ass cigars. Fuck your yuck mouth teeth. Fuck your hair piece. Fuck your chocolate. Fuck Guy Ritchie. Fuck Prince William. Fuck the Queen. This is America. My president is black and my Lambo is blue, nigga. Now get the fuck out my hotel room. And if I see you in the street, I'm slapping the shit out of you. You y'all you already know, man. You already know how we gonna pull up on them. Hey, hey, who was you, pimp? Hey, what the hey, fuck? What, what the Get your motherfucker. Hey, hey, that nigga squeezing me. Hey, Get player. that freak hey, ass nigga up. You ain't hear my nigga say back the, the fuck, fuck up, dude. Yeah, man, we pulling up. Y'all know how we pulling up. Man, I know they ain't who I think it is. Man, that's that damn camera, man. Hey, John, I'm talking all that shit. I tell you, I'ma get your ass, huh? Man, stop all that damn barking and take his ass with me. I told you, I'ma get you. I don't wanna hear that shit. I told you. You ain't no damn dog, boy. You a pussy cat. Hey, John, I got my heart in your head. Hey, John. All narratives as it relate to the land of Wakanda have been destroyed today. We have successfully landed the plane and we destroyed whatever thought, figment of imagination of Wakanda that you may have. It's not real. It's pseudo. It doesn't exist. As soon as you wake up from La La Land, like Deontay Wilder did, the better it'll be for you. I still love you. <laughs> man, y'all better, y'all, man, y'all better get y'all some money, man. And hold on, hold on, hold on. I got one more thing to tell you too. This is some real shit. When I was younger, when I was a teenager, right? When I came into the nation of Islam, see, I was indoctrinated at a young age. I was indoctrinated at 17 years old. This is why it's important when you fish. You know, in Nation of Islam, we call it fishing. When you fish, you want to fish in the young brothers because you can get a young mind. A young mind hasn't had a lot of experience yet. Their mind is young. It's, easy to, it's easier to shape and train and indoctrinate the young person. So I came in young, right? So when I was around, I was under the impression that when the Million Man March hit in 1995, that this was going to be the end of America. We was talking about, man, 400 years, man. You know, you heard, you heard the Bible say after four, you know, the book, you know, the book of Malachi, you know, which is the last book of the Old Testament say before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, you know, I will send you Elijah the prophet, you know, and, uh, you know, and he will come turn the hearts of the men to uh, the hearts of the, uh, the fathers to the children and the children to the father. Least I come and smite the earth with the curse. I'm paraphrasing, but that's something what it says. So we was under the impression, boy, this shit finna be it, boy. Boy, listen, you know, Elijah Muhammad is a Alive. He escaped the death plot. He's really not buried in Chicago at Mercy. He didn't die at Mercy Hospital. He, he, he escaped the death plot. He's up there on the mothership with Master Farad Muhammad. And they up there on the mothership. And they waiting on the right time to come destroy America. Kill all the white folks. And then we going to save all everybody who registered in the nation of Islam. Like we, I used to believe that shit. Guess what happened? I know dudes doing life in prison ain't never getting out. Because they thought it was going to be over. <laughs> That's what I'm telling y'all, man. Y'all better stop listening to that bullshit. Anyways, y'all know what time it is. Yep. That's right. I'm running things. I'm running things. Cream corn. That's why they call me that. Smooth. I got more measure for your pleasure. Stick with me, baby. I'll have you farting through silk. <laughs> and let a nigga mess with me. I'll jump on him. All 93 pounds of pure dynamite. Hey man, shout out to Tila. Do I have Tila on the list? I ain't got Tila. I thought I had Tila on the list too. Damn, what the fuck? The fuck? Okay, I ain't got Tila. How do I get Miss Tila? Oh, Tila right here. All right, my bad. Shout out to Tila too, man. Hey, okay. Anyways, anyway, y'all listen to these niggas y'all want to, boy. Y'all, your ass gonna be in jail doing a whole lot of time in the graveyard and broke. Big third leg Tyrone gonna have your girl now. You sitting there listening to these niggas, third leg Tyrone gonna have your girl doing some things that you ain't gonna be able to do because you gonna be in jail.
You get what I'm saying? Anyways, um, before we go, we got to say all praises due to the most high, the most exalted, the greatest human being on the planet Earth, Mr. Al Heyman. Well, you know, I guess I got to be like everybody else and say Al Heyman. <laughs> I can quit my job now, baby. Six figures, baby. You feel me? I'm about to but, but a name, a name. Do you have a name? Oh, nah, nah. I ain't got no name, you know? Name them names, man. They know who they is. Name them names, <laughs> please. The names need to be named. They know who they is. <laughs> the Mexican monster. Shout out to all the callers, man. Shout out to Curtis from Long Beach. Hey, okay. Jackie from Houston. I mean, Jackie from um, Jackie Houston from Florida. Hey, okay. Jackie said he was from Pensacola, Florida. Shout out to Red Strike from the ATL. Hey, hey, okay. Rob Knox from DC. Hey, okay. Randy from the UK. Hey, okay. Nate from the UK. Hey, okay. M1 from the BX. Hey, okay. Martin from Jersey, Brick City. Hey, okay. Tony from Chi Town, two times. Hey, okay. Rick from Toronto. Hey, okay. Trillion Dollar Dreams from Detroit. Hey, Leo from Ace Town. Hey, okay. Corey from Texas. Hey, okay. Uh, D Block from Dallas. Hey, hey, okay. Troy from B More. Hey, okay. Yarmus from Brooklyn. Stand up. Hey, okay. The brother who called from Minneapolis. I forgot your name. Hey, okay. And Rob from New York. Hey, okay. Let's give all the callers a round of applause. Yeah, see, boy, I'm telling you, boy, it's, it's, boy, it's, boy, it's gonna take a whole lot. You gotta be a bad motherfucker, boy. Um, anyways, um, shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Everybody, man, um, salute to everyone. Y'all know what time it is. Shout out to the PYTs, the Tender Moments, and the Honey Dips. Much love. Shout out to everyone that's in the chat. Shout out to Brady Twelve. Hey, okay. um, shout out to Tila. Hey, okay. Eric Grimey. Hey, okay. JC. Hey, okay. Shout out to um Incredible Black. Hey, okay. Keith Bulldogs, our sponsor. Hey. Shout out to um, No Cap Entertainment. Hey, okay. Corey Bradley. Hey, okay. Shout out to shout out to the inevitable D Block. Hey, okay. Shout out to Marty King Boxing. Hey, okay. uh, Some Ramdo. Hey, okay. Shout out to Sheila and Cali. Hey, okay. In my opinion. Hey, hey, okay. School of X Men. Hey, okay. Knockdown 305. Hey, hey, okay. Jason Phillips. Hey, okay. Uh, shout out to um, uh, who else we have? Shout out to Stephen X, North Carolina Stand Up. Hey, okay. JC. Hey, okay. The Undisputed Talk. Hey, okay. G5. Hey, okay. Who else we have? Shout out to my sister Mo Easy. Hey, okay. Dog Man J. Hey, okay. Jason Phillips. Hey, okay. The Nigerian Nightmare. Hey, okay. Shout out to uh, my sister Nay. Hey, okay. Sequoia. Hey, okay. Rick Star. Hey, okay. Uh, shout out to Chi Town. What you say, family? Say Drew checking in from Chicago. Shout out to Drew from Chicago. Hey, okay. It is what it is, man. And salute to everybody, man. Shout out to the PYTs, the Tender Runners, and the Honey Deals. Shout out to my dog, Booger Ray. And shout out to the boys over there at B-More, man. Shout out to Agent Broner. Shout out to Richardson Hitchens. And shout out to Javante Tate Davis. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Oh, that look good. Hold up. 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 I ain't gonna lie, boy. That shit right there is hilarious. Y'all know what time it is. I see y'all. Yeah, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Shout out to Anthony C, Marty King Boxing, The Undisputed Talk, Jason Phillips, Brady 12, Nay, Marty King Boxing again, uh, Daniel Agnew, Stephen X, T, 
Tila, um, G5 from the Bronx, New Country, No Cap Entertainment, Marty King Boxing again. I don't know why I keep saying your name. That's three times. Shout out to JC, the inevitable D Block, and anyone else I may have forgotten. Corey Bradley, salute to you, fam. Um, I'll see you guys on the next one. You know my motto don't meet me there, beat me there. Peace. We'll do a pop up outside. Come on, I'm out of here, bro. Let's go. Come on.